Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Oh, it's a Sunday. It's like we used to do. Remember we, we used did. to do Sundays oh, every yeah. week? I'm very sorry that about that. What are you sorry what? about? I feel like that was my fault. It wasn't. It was because we Why? we got tired of like wrapping up our weekends early so we could, you know, we wanted to be with our families and stuff and and uh um and it's hard to do Sunday episodes although we built this show doing Sundays and Thursdays. Mm-hmm. That was the whole point, right? And uh and so to do one on a Sunday is great cuz you forget how like relaxed the vibe is when you walk in. Like we used to walk in the Rogers, like all oh, of us on a Sunday. Drive? Sunday, oh. Sunday, Thursday, or Sunday, Wednesday. We did. We we switched it back and forth between Wednesday and Thursday if the Leafs were playing. We had a very so, right. unreliable schedule. Yeah. So if the right. Leafs were playing, right. we didn't we didn't do that particular day, whether it was the Wednesday or Thursday. And then it usually ended up being Wednesday because it was Wednesday night hockey. Except and that sometimes was in, we did, and I would be distracted by the box score jury yes. show. Oh yeah. And oh, I would do a that terrible was awful. Job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was terrible. It was a. Yeah, I'm so glad we do it the way we do it now. But yeah. uh, to everybody who's a day one who was with us through Woo! those days, welcome back to Sundays. Now I I, I, I I feel like everybody's feeling good today. There's a lot to get through. Not just with the Leafs, but did Gabe Velarde's stick touch the puck? That's really what we need to know today. Oh, goodness. Before we get into it, though, Dangle Picks. DanglePicks.com. Every single Leafs Lightning game, we're giving away uh, Mitch Marner signed jersey to the person who picks the best. There are 10 questions, and I actually have all the contest winners from Game 1, Game 2, and last night's Game 3. So Dangle S. Bi- uh, big shout out to... <laughs> by the way, we got... Yo, we got killed. You, the three of us got killed in the in the leaderboard in the first game. Oh, by the, way, the first game, It yeah. resets every game, by the way. So every game, you got a shot. It's not like you have to be at the top of the leaderboard for three games in a row. Every game, you start from zero. Uh, so big congrats to Jen, uh, who, who got 17 points, tied with Zombie and Jay Proctor with 17 points. However, there was a tiebreaker in there, and Jen got it, and I believe it was like closest to the goals or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then game two, Frez... Uh, you got yourself the Marner jersey, Papa Dots with the $250 Skip the Dishes gift card, and Emily uh, got a $100 gift card. And then last night, Steve, you were 20th in the rankings. I just saw. I no did very way. well. 20th very in the well. rankings, 14 points. Steve, you did not get a Mitch Marner signed jersey. Although, uh, I don't think you have any room left on your wall anyway. Out it, of, wow, a lot of people. It went to Bussa Punk. <laughs> And then yeah. twenty two $250 uh, skip card to Cam Jan Bam. And then Willie P93. Uh, uh, that's actually... <laughs> that's a good name. Um, Willie P93, you got a $100 gift card. Man, Woo! if you're not trying to make me sweat over your username, you're not doing this right. Can I Can I do mine for oh, game four? Do it, do it. Okay, do so I logged now. in on danglepicks.com, www.danglepicks.com, entered, uh, logged in, and now I'm going through all my picks for the game. So who will win? Toronto. Toronto. That's what I put. Hey, this is these are my picks. Oh. <laughs> will Mitch Marner have over 1.5 points? Hmm. Yes. That's what I put. <laughs> he leads all playoff scoring. Over under five and a half goals to be scored in the game. Hmm. Under. I also hit under. Yeah, nobody gave. Nobody cares. Yeah, they do. How many Man. shots will Toronto have? Zero to twenty-five. Twenty-five to twenty-nine. Thirty to thirty-three. Thirty-four plus. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit thirty-four plus mm. because I feel like that's the smartest bet because you get everything above thirty-four. <laughs> you, get, you get the most amount of numbers. Ooh. <laughs> you get 34 to infinity. They did not have a single double digit period in shots last game. Yeah, but I get 34 to infinity, so I think that's the mm, smart way to go. I did 26 to 20. I'm just doing the analytics. Brandon Pridham over here. Uh, what period will have the most shots? Second period. Always for sure. two. Just Always for that. Two second. Three. Oh! Whoa. Oh shit! Oh how shit! Many you can't stop will, him. How many points will Austin Matthews get? What He's gonna get do? two. He's gonna get two. Uno. One. Oh, pff, you guys don't believe three plus. Whoa! Whoa. All right. Will all right. there be goals in each period? I say yes. Adam, what'd you say? Uh, I'm gonna say I'm waiting for this game. Like I keep waiting in this series to get tight. <laughs> um, what are you talking about? We had an overtime. Game. I know, but like in terms of like low goal scoring tight. 
And I don't think it's going to happen. What's low goal scoring? Like like three or four goals in a game. So you're like, talking like a three one two one game. Two one. Yeah, it's yeah. Two one one kind of. Yeah, I, I haven't yeah. seen that yet. So I I feel like what was the question again? One more time. Will there be goals in each period? Yes. I'm gonna yes. say yes. If no it's question. two one, it could still happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Across the whole game. It's true. Uh, which team? A uh, couple more. Two more. Uh, which team will have more blocked shots? Toronto. Well, if they play like they did last night, it's going to be Toronto. Uh, but I don't think they will. Tampa. I'm anticipating the Leafs playing with the lead. Ooh. Toronto has uh, Luke Shen, so I'm going to go with Toronto. They also, have the, they also have the greatest <laughs> block shotsman Where were you of going all with that? time, Mark Giordano. <laughs> be faster. How many hits will be in the game? 0 to 50, 51 to 60, 61 to 70, 71 plus. What do you got? Mm. What do you guys got? Well, that's I'm a interested. good question. <laughs> I have 61 to 70 because that contains 69. Adam, what do you, you get? Oh, did you hear that I said 69? Yes, I did. Did you hear it? All I'm right. going to say. Right, Elon. I'm, uh, yeah, I am also going to say that. It has. Yeah, 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 I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that. 61 Steve's. to 70? Yeah. You got analytics, 71 plus. Okay. I got 71 okay. to infinity. All right. Last question. <laughs> Will Toronto win by one and a half goals? No, it's going to be tight. Adam? Um, yes. I'm going to say yes as well because I got Toronto winning and I always account for the empty net. So there you go. I think they're going to win by two. And then the tiebreaker question was Toronto and Tampa combined shots on goal. I'm going to go 70. Ooh. 61. Uh, combined shots on goal, I'm going to say 65. You are in. There you go. In. So you can answer right now. Uh, almost immediately after every game, the new one pops up. So if if you bet hard on Tampa or you bet hard on Toronto uh, with your answers, um, <laughs> it's all good. It's also brought to you by Sports Interaction. Um, and I have an interesting one for Dangles Doozies later on in our Leafs breakdown. Oh. I specifically reached out for this one. So we'll... we'll you called up the Bastel Dangle I call dial? I the Bast Dog, as we call yeah. him. Uh, he was uh, crying after the double overtime loss for Winnipeg. Oh. Which I felt so. I was cheer. I honestly was cheering for Winnipeg just for Dave. Like I was like, "Come on, guys, and get this Brady done!" And Liss, they yeah. were both there. Yeah, Brady and Liss. No, ah. I'm kidding. <laughs> they ah. were there in the whiteout. Our first whiteout since 2019. Can you believe that? Oh. Wow. That's the last time they had a home playoff game with people. It, oh yeah, with people, with people is the it's real key. asterisk mm -hmm. there because it's a long time. We were talking before the show, Maddie and I. Is, oh, first playoff goal since 2017. I'm like. No, mm -hmm. there was the Columbus series that didn't we'll, count we'll, and also never happened. We'll hit it. We'll hit it. We'll get there. We'll 2020 get there. never happened. So, so year. actually, you know what, Maddie? This is a perfect time. Can you throw that over? Throw that over. Okay. Maddie brought in something. Oh, no. Oh, no. Here we go. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Now, now <laughs> what was Maddie talking about when she said something about 2017 as it pertains to last night's game? The last time the Leafs... Scored an overtime winner in a playoff series because the qualifying round does not count. Maybe. Depends who you ask. The NHL, it counts for some reason. Game three, 2017 against the Washington Capitals. Tyler Bozak! Ah! Now, now, Steve, what do you remember about this goal in 2017? What, ha what was so important about this goal? I remember being there mm -hmm. in the barn. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife and I had to separate because okay. what we sorry <laughs> that's, that's Adam's hey, thing. Yeah, they, don't, don't tell, don't tell hey. my story. Step <laughs> off of Adam's lane here. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> really. Wow. So wow. you're gonna hear the show, <laughs> and I misspoke. Um, what happened with I you? Love you. I'll, I'll pick they up separated. separated. They separated, but yeah. they they worked it out. No. So we were able to get tickets. You were calling on Facebook. Probably. We're not together. <laughs> show Adam. It's like when he was texting was when, so uh, when, when Kelly was texting oh. on Excel in that <laughs> Nelly video. In. <laughs> oh, you haven't even logged in. Nope. Oh. With my you're missing out. Ryerson email. Um, so no, we were sitting apart. I remember the Leafs going down 2 nothing early, and there was an Oilers fan for some reason sitting next to us. Ah, there always is. And it was it's one thing if you're there and you have no dog in the fight and you're there to have fun, but he was just making snide comments about the Leafs the whole time, and he was being kind of a dick about it. Mm. That was that game. Kadri throws the big hits and Komarov, too, and Matthew scores, and Joe Bowen goes in and assists to the guy sitting on the bench. <laughs> uh 
There was one of the seats that we had was obscured viewing. Mm -hmm. There was a five on three penalty kill and I couldn't see the net. So every time the puck goes to the Leafs net, I have a minor heart attack. Anyway, the Leafs down. They come back. Willie scores the tying goal. Woo! Lars Eller takes a face-off violation penalty. The Leafs have a power play in overtime and deflection in the slot for the OT winner. That guy right there, Tyler <laughs> Bozak. Yeah, that was great. And you know what? That put them up 2-1 to one in the series. Uh, they didn't win another game. But I do remember <laughs> that was the last time people liked the Leafs, like outside of Toronto. Because people were like, wow, you guys did real great. Like, congrats to you, whatever. This team, you know, Washington was supposed to win the championship that year. They'd gone out and got Shattenkirk. Absolutely. And uh, they didn't win it. Uh, they won it the next year. But it was one of those things where it's like the plucky little Leafs, you know, squeaked in after how many years and did really well. I had a tweet that people keep showing me from that run mm -hmm. where, because the Caps loaded up and Kevin Shattenkirk was their big addition. Yeah. And the Caps. Chat Daddy. Is what we used to call him. So the, the Shat Deuces. <laughs> That's right, Shat Deuces. <laughs> and, and I tweeted, uh, I was making fun of him because I go, hey, you know, we're the Washington Capitals. We're a regular season juggernaut uh, that has trouble getting over the hump in the playoffs. What should we do? I don't know. Let's go and get guys from the St. Louis Blues. Yeah. And then in succession... 2018, the Caps won the Cup. Mm -hmm. 2019, the Blues won the Cup. And in 2020, Shattenkirk won the Cup. Wow. With, with the Tampa Bay That's Lightning. That's right. So it was really right at the time. Didn't he? You had to be there. He signed with New York after that season, didn't he? And then like had two bad years and, and then got bought out. And that's how he ended up in Tampa, right? Isn't that how that works? So Something he he ended up in Tampa somehow. Because he that, wanted to be in New York so bad. The, the right? Lightning had two players they shouldn't have had. Uh, Shattenkirk should have never had a chance to never. be there. And Bogosian. Yeah. People I mean, talk about how he was almost a Leaf. He was almost a Leaf because Buffalo decided, ah, just leave. Right. Because he didn't want to be there. No one wanted to be there. And they were like, ah, just go. They just let him go. And the lightning scooped him up and changed one day, his life. One day, and, and I'm, I'm happy that things have changed in Buffalo, but I would really love to know, like, when you have a guy like Ryan O'Reilly who goes on to win the Conn Smythe saying, I lost my love for hockey in Buffalo, I would love to know what was going on in that organization really, actually, during that time. We've heard whispers. We've heard. I want to know, give me the, not the Coles notes, give me the deep, dark ESPN 30 for 30 on that. I want to know exactly why. How does Zach Bogosian, who looked like he was done, mm -hmm. the Leafs were going to sign him and then David Ayers. Oh, cooked. Um, oh, um, cooked. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly looked like he was a shell of himself. Jack Eichel was... Taylor Hall. Taylor Taylor Hall. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there were some names on that team. I just... I want to know what was going on behind the scenes. I mean, Lena Solmark got himself on the map by having a league... A slightly above league average save percentage. On, on the... the yeah. The and we were like, damn, yeah. that guy must be fucking amazing. <laughs> and he was. Turns out he was. Yeah. Turns out. And it's funny. For what Lena Solmark signed in Buffalo for, you're, it's shocking. Oh. It's shocking that anybody let that guy go. Like on it, what does he make? Five million bucks or something? Less. It's so stupid. Like, yeah. like, and then Bobrovsky's at ten. Oh yeah, because Bobrovsky was good before he signed it. Uh -huh. That's the key, you see. But so was Linus. Yeah. No, not like that. Oh, I guess, man. Not like that. Man. What, Buffalo needs to make the playoffs and have a little bit of success before that doc gets made. But I earnestly think it gets made. Okay. Everyone loves, made. everyone loves a fire festival. Where did they come from? Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Now, um, going to the Leafs. Listen, I know uh, we're all feeling good this morning. Let's go through the game. Noel Achari uh, opens the scoring uh, 345 into the game. And what's important about this, and we talked about this after game one. We talked about it after game two. Starting strong. Dude, it makes things so much easier. That line looked like... On that shift, they looked like they'd play together all 82 games. They're looking really good. Holy. And Matt Nyes, what a setup. You can't take him out. You, you can't take, can't him, take out. him out. Even if he has a bad game four, you can't take him out. I've seen enough that I'm pretty confident he won't. That's the thing, right? He's a factor all the time. Uh, he doesn't well, disappear at all. Well, and like the knock against him, you could say as well in his young NHL career, he's taken a few penalties. So let's replace him with Michael Bunting, question mark. Nope. Uh-uh. This kid looks really good. Lost in the Leafs tying it. And I don't think he got an assist on this one. But he was on the ice in that final minute. 
Oh, we're going to get to that. Oh, well, I know oh, we're going to get to that. We're, we're as in the long fir- as we're talking we're the, about Matthew Knight. We're in the first four minutes of the first period right now. I'm not the last four, the last three. I'm fired up. Uh, now, it was great to see Achari get that goal um, because he's played so well. That line is just unfun. They're just not mm. fun to play against. And and the, the, the thing that they all have is they all have a bit of a bite and they're all strong on the puck. It's something that Babcock used to talk about, being stronger in the puck. When someone yeah. pushes you, <laughs> when they push you, when you got the puck... And you, and you retain possession. Ryan O'Reilly's good at it. Noel Achari's good at it. And Matthew Nyes, coming out of college, right? You don't, you just don't know how that's going to translate. Uh, he, many times in the last couple of games, has had pucks in real tight to the net. He's been pushed and shoved, as Tampa is really good at. Mm-hmm. You know, they've got it. They, they're really good at protecting Vasilevsky. Good hunter. And he, he's held on to it. Game number five of his NHL career. That line is something, it's a term that Jesse loves. What is it, Jesse? What's Give it term? to me. Two way. Oh, oh yeah, let's go. That is Excellent. a two way line, actually though. <laughs> Excellent. It's two a way real two way line. Yeah, it certainly is. It certainly is. Um, Sorelli ties it a couple minutes later. I know, that's, that's a side oh. shot at David Camp for whatever. Yeah, that's right. Because he's a one. What? He's a two way. He's player a one way player. Really great one way. <laughs> but it's the Both second way. Both ways are backwards. There are some times where David Camp though carries the puck. And you're like, oh, he's pretty fast. <laughs> You know, like he does do some things in the sure. offensive zone. Sometimes you're like, "Wow, all yeah, right." He handles it like a, like the puck is an oval. <laughs> <laughs> Bit stone handish. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Did David Camp not go for the Michigan? Yes, he did. What are you guys talking about? He did. He did. He did. He did. David Camp in Michigan. <laughs> I, I want him extended just so I can watch him and go, "Huh?" Like e- almost he every surprises shift. me all the time. Yeah, yeah. almost every all shift. Time. I'm like, "Huh." That's really David Camp. Do you think? <laughs> yeah. Do you think Dubis knew? I don't like. Listen, that's one of his best signings of his time in Toronto. Yeah. No question, D- David Camp. But even Kyle Dubis would probably have to be like, okay, he surprised us a little bit, right? That, I love the enough. guy. I, I love think, him too. I think he's excellent in what he does. He's amazing. Yes. Yeah. No, he's great. What he does is great defense, and he's good at it. And <laughs> I'm entirely convinced someone tried to have this conversation with Kyle Dubas. Hey, Matthew's got 60 goals. That's pretty cool. Yeah, but did you see Camp's XG? <laughs> <laughs> Expected by whomph. He's uh, whomph me. me. <laughs> and then he went south of Michigan. So uh, how can you complain? <laughs> Sorelli ties it a couple minutes later, basically on the first shot of the game for the Lightning. Um, that's two depth goals from both teams. And here's the thing. The, the, the problem that has haunted Toronto in previous playoff rounds is that uh, when the Stars couldn't score, when they were isolated, the, the depth couldn't either. See, that's actually the second line for Tampa, but they've been elevated from last Fair year. Fair enough. Okay. Right? Fair enough. They've uh, they their responsibility has. Definitely I'm talking about non Kucherov Stamkos. Right. Right. I'm talking about depth beyond the stars. They Kucherov had like one real takeover shift in that game, but he hasn't been. I'm not. I'm just. Don't even just I'm leave too it. Too afraid to say. Are, you, it out are loud. you kidding me? Where are you going with that? Nowhere. Don't say that. Nowhere. Uh, Morgan nowhere. Riley unfortunately made a bit of a rough play on that. That's where Jesse actually texted the group and he's like, "That was pretty bad." <laughs> and, so Morgan made an awful play, and I hate criticizing the dude, but William Nylander is absolutely useless on defense yes. for like 90% of that game. Yes. Like what was he doing on that play? Like initially the that was that's the reaction cuz cuz Morgan he overplays it and then the whole middle of the ice is open. But then your forward is got to have at least some just help in in that zone and Williams just fucking coasting down the middle of the ice well behind the play doing absolutely nothing. That's unacceptable in a playoff game. Yeah. And you know, we've talked about the Nylander Tavares Kerfoot line and how I don't like it, but it was the best line in the ice in game two. You know why Kerfoot keeps getting put on that line? And to Kerfoot's credit, babysitter. Mm-hmm. He's a babysitter on that line. Cause JT, I mean, for all his good, you know what the bad is. Not the most fleet of foot. He's going to win your battles. When he has the puck, he's probably not going to lose it. But if you have the puck, it's a problem. And then there's Willie, who I don't know about. He's certainly not lazy. Mm-mm. But there, are, there, were, there were two plays in last night's game where the puck got forced to the, if you're standing in the Leafs net, the right point. Tampa gets extended possession out of it because Willie is slow to react. Yeah. That play happens again a few minutes later, but it's Marner instead of Willie. Pew! 
right after it. I don't think he was first on the puck, but he was there quicker, causing more pressure and making it more difficult for Tampa to do what they want. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he doesn't. And- he doesn't seem to. I don't. It's not about caring, but he's not defensively responsible. He, there's there's no awareness to be like, hey, I have to try really hard on this end of the ice as well so that my team doesn't allow these goals and yet, when, aren't his when take- my defenseman makes a bad mistake. Aren't his takeaways really high, too? Like, if yes. you put the effort in, yes. because as you know he's got the effort. At the offensive blue line and in the neutral zone, William Nylander's an elite defender. Oh, he is unreal with taking away the puck. In his own zone, it shuts off. It's just the strangest thing. Yeah. Weird. It's really weird. Oh, well, it might just be that he's focused on the breakout and not in the yeah. moment on the defense. There's he's probably on. a lot of that going on. He's trying to turn the defense into offense. So it he's starts try- with the puck. He's trying to cheat. You know, you you hang around the blue line so you can turn around the other way. But mm-hmm. he needs to just be more defensively responsible. And it's I, this is something that he's trying to beat into him for like uh, four years and now. Babs before that. <laughs> yeah, and Babs before that, and it's never really worked. And that's why he gets benched occasionally during the regular season. And you see these mistakes. And when you're an NHL player that can't happen no some players no. are what they are yeah <laughs> he was drafted nine years ago like you take the good with the bad oh no he's you know, he's going up for the selkie next year boys come on <laughs> i hope so. um no now, but they they give him the they give him the little benchings and they tell him to smarten up and then he usually does for a little bit and then he falls off a little so let's hope that it, they watch the game film you see this because if we can see it they can see it you know yes. so hopefully that gives them the motivation just kind of hey be a little bit more defensively responsible here you can't mm-hmm. be useless on the other end mm-hmm. leaf score a second goal in the first period marner who's got a great shot all of a sudden this you know the last 18 months remember he his shot before was like a bit of a muffin right now it's a laser beam and it was a strong cycle for the Leafs one of the few that they really had throughout this game Mm -hmm. cycling in the lightning zone they were doing that to them all game two Matthews who barely has time to turn around sees it tips it goal goes in picked it out of thin air perfect and I know listen I know Matthews is a Leaf and I know outside of Leafs Nation people just are just want to take credit away from him based on the fact that he's a Leaf and Leaf fans are annoying and I get it. There's a lot of us. Yeah. But Austin Matthews' talent is so unbelievable sometimes. You just, that to me, little play, not that exciting to look at on a highlight reel, but the when you look at his body positioning and where his ass is, literally, where his ass is pointing, from the time Mitch shoots to the time the puck passes and tips off of his stick, it's incredible that he was managed. He managed to do that. Goal scorers know how to score goals, man. They, they, and that's all kinds. Mm-hmm. You think of the toe drag wrister. You think of the one-timer. No, man, that's part of it. Battling in front. Tipping in playoff goal. Uh, TJ Brody uh, goes off for a cross-check from mine. He's had some bad penalties this this series. Um, and he is their most dependable defenseman. The last night was the, uh, I think, full spectrum of TJ Brody. He, you know, he didn't have a good game. They're also lost without him. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, he, man, so much of their success runs through him. Well, and remember what we were talking about with Justin Hall and driving into the offensive zone and then doing nothing with the puck. He stays along the board, stays along the boards, get into, gets into a dead zone, loses the puck. Drew two it, calls. It led to, well, this is what I'm saying, is it led to a goal against uh, last week. Last night, instead of driving along the boards, he drove to the net shorthanded, draws the call from Kucherov, so that basically negates the uh, the penalty that Brody took, which is actually really important. But then Toronto takes another penalty uh, with 2.42 to go. And this is a Tavares one-handed slash on Hedman. I saw it plenty of them all game, but this is one that's going to get called. Um, first period. And it and it's the first period, right? They're going to call that. It's one-handed slash. We're pretty clear that that's a call in game three. In game six, I don't think that's a call. Depending on the time of the game. If they announce Sheldon <laughs> Keefe gets fined today, I think I'm going to lose it. Well, it, we'll, we'll okay, talk about we'll, that. We will get we'll to talk that. about that. We Lightning score, that. Uh, once the power play expires, uh, the Leafs do love letting in a goal with a minute to go in, in the... Uh, they <laughs> sure do. The- <laughs> but it was interesting. When that, ha- when that goal went in, I didn't get the sense that it was weighing on them. I felt like they kind of felt like, ah, they're... They weren't, you know, when the Leafs are, are down and when you watch them enough, you know when the body language is, like, down. They didn't seem to go down like that. It weighed on me. I am sure I know it did. <laughs> it weighed on me more than, it weighed on me more than Tampa's 4-2 goal in game one. Why? Uh, because the Leafs had the 2-1 lead, the one nothing lead. I was feeling really good. But the tide of the game really changed. 
I want to say the shots were something like I know it was 13 to 8 after the after the first, but the Leafs had five goals or sorry, five shots on goal when they scored their second and they ended the period with eight. So they only had three after that. They didn't generate a thing. And you really saw the seeds being planted for the second period that Tampa was going to have. So it wasn't just that Tampa tied it for me. It's that it's where the game was tilted. The Leafs couldn't have asked for a better start to the game and they're still tied. And Tampa is seriously tilting the ice in their favor. It was a problem. Something that was also pretty clear in the first is that Sergei Samsonov was not seeing the puck that well. Ilya. Ilya. Sergey. Oh, so oh my God. I can't stop. I can't stop. Uh, Sergey, uh, Sergey, Ilya oh, Samsonov. <laughs> Ilya Samsonov. Uh, there was a there was a lot where he would like drop to his knees and like have his and then you know when that goalie is like I don't know where the puck is and it's behind them. Mm-hmm. Man, and they he, assume uh, it's a goal. He was. I, what concerned me was the amount of times he would make the first save. The rest of the net would be completely wide open. He, his movements were way too big and wild. Yeah. Just like I've said with Frederick Anderson and Jack Campbell when they've struggled. When they're in their net and they're poised, that's that's what I really like about Joseph Wall's game. You rarely ever see him do that. He's just a robot. He's a modern-day goalie in his net. The Woolbot. The Woolbot. Eh? There it is. With, with the occasional uh, ability to make a really athletic save. That's Andre Vasilevsky on his game in a nutshell. He's huge. Uh, he just plays really solid positionally and also can do, like, greater than 180 degree splits mm-hmm. he sh- you shouldn't be able to do that um but samson off redeems himself at the beginning of the second period tanda Janot breakaway and he stands tall yeah. and that's when you saw sammy bring it up when the rest of the team was faltering i really thought he held them in that game for he a did long he, time. he did he went into first intermission as the whipping boy of the team mm-hmm. and uh in the first five minutes of the second period he was the only reason that game didn't get carried away uh it was at that point too that uh uh natalie my wife chose to leave the room for five minutes because it was too stressful already she's right yeah <laughs> she just like, she, if I would, like, she went and did the new york times word puzzle because she was like i gotta i gotta get would out you here. say that natalie separated from the room oh from you? potentially potentially <laughs> Did you um, say that she divorced you from the couch? Wait, no, she sorry, was, I'm not doing this right now. <laughs> Would you say? Um, fast forward to 625 of the second period. The Leafs have been really bad all period. And uh, oh gosh. not Taylor Radish. Uh, Darren, Darren. Darren Radish gets his first. They kept saying Taylor Radish's name wrong. You know, they kept calling him Darren for some reason. Yeah. Very strange. <laughs> yeah, it's so Darren, weird. Darren Get Radish. Good Cuthbert. Uh, <laughs> Get good. <laughs> Taylor, idiot. <laughs> uh, Darren Radish he gets his first career goal. On Sergey Samsonov. Yes, yes. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Man, it's crazy. He's like 50. <laughs> he did pretty well for a winger. <laughs> uh, Matt, like 50 also. And, and that all happens because McCabe, I think, goes for the big hit. Uh, or is it Nyes that went for the big hit behind the net? And the thing was on Radish, because Radish is coming behind. They, uh, McCabe, I think. You do the hit, but if you do the hit, you got to make sure that they lose possession. You know, I think it's easy to, to point at some of the defensive performances, but just like on um, which goal was it? I think it was the first one, like how you talked about Willie was useless there. Um, the Leafs forwards were just not able to even be a factor defensively. Mm-hmm. And that was also a situation where a line got caught out there in mm-hmm. a really bad situation for the Leafs. So they iced the puck. I don't remember who did it, but it's Tavares with Nylander and Nice. Mm-hmm. That's not a bad line, but you would never choose it for a D-zone draw. Right. Never. And Tampa took advantage. Sam Lafferty, who as of a few minutes ago was fined $3,108.11, the maximum allowable under the CBA for cross-checking Ross Colton. Uh... Oh, he just he just that just came down. And by the way, I had to check NHL player safety to see if it was the real account, because, of course, they're not verified anymore. <laughs> yeah, we can't. We don't know. <laughs> but that's the one with a quarter million followers. So I'm going to assume it was it's actually them. Oh, you mean legacy verified? Yeah. Um, Sam Lafferty. So here's the thing. At this point, when Sam Lafferty goes to the box, the Leafs have allowed four straight power plays and have only had one go, go their way in the entire game. Uh Kind of hard to argue with the penalties that the refs were calling against the Leafs as well. Like, you oh, know, uh, no argument. No, like, I, I don't think you can. Like, these are penalties where, like, the refs are probably begging you not to do it. 
Like, please don't make me call you on this stupid shit. It's 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 slashes to the gloves, like with Tavares. It's it's cross checks, like Lafferty. It's what um, uh, who's the other guy that went uh in in the first four that we were just talking about him? Brody. Brody. Yeah. Stuff stuff that you just like. It's so avoidable. So avoidable. I I know there is the rare occasion where you get the ump show uh, effect with the ref where they you know I'm it's my be, game now. Yeah, I'm gonna be mm-hmm. the hero here. Yeah. I think 99 percent of the time. They're like, please don't make me. I think refs are just like us. They don't want to work. <laughs> don't yeah. make me do stuff. Please don't make me do stuff. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that period, by the way, a lot of that period and a lot of uh, some of the other periods, they just didn't, they didn't work. They put the freaking whistle away and we'll get to that. We're almost there. Yeah. We're almost there. Uh, so with the Leafs, and I want to I want to touch on this now. For those types of penalties, those are the penalties that kill you in a series. Over the course of time. Yeah, you might be able to kill it off all in a, in a game like the Leafs did last night. But that's the kind of stuff that's going to sink you, especially against a three-time, two-time winner and three-time-in-a-row appearance Stanley Cup team like the Tampa Bay Lightning. You know what I notice about Tampa's power play? They don't have bad ones. Like, ever. Like, even if they don't score... There's some I chances. S- I spend the entire two minutes shitting myself. Every time. There are some times where you see they... I mean, the Leafs have it happen where they just don't get it together and you're able to get the puck and clear it and get the puck and clear it and they flub a pass, have to turn back. Tampa doesn't have those. Those don't happen. They get possession every time. They've been winning a lot of really key faceoffs too in this series. And I hate every single time Tampa has a power play. It's a stress ball. Um, uh, Sammy looked a bit uh, shaky on this, but the Lightning think they score about 30 seconds in. And uh, it's actually... Is this the Braden Point one? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. My so, mind is... I'm, I know. My brain is spinning. So the Lightning think they have the goal. 30? Right? No goal. Puck was covered. Uh, and you'd think, listen, Sammy, you got to have you got to have a, a definitive cover on that. But... I thought, it, I thought it was the right call. Did you? Okay. Why did you think that? The puck was John covered. Cooper was upset about this after the game. Yeah, of course. As you would expect. As you would expect. So, so for if you're a Tampa Bay fan, you're thinking... Well, they, this is where the refs gift wrapped the game to the Leafs. That's it what I saw. It was wedged in his pad. If Braden Point was able to score on the first attempt, you might have me. Mm-hmm. But it was wedged. Okay. Whistle blew. All right. Uh, so that is, so the Lightning think they've scored. They they uh, here's the thing about the Lightning that I really think the Leafs need to pick up on. If they're not sure about a goal, they celebrate anyway. They yep. sell that celebration, man. Smart, smart, smart. The Leafs need to do that. That's an old, uh, I've talked about this before in the book. I didn't just write about zoo stories. Mm-hmm. I also wrote about dragon boat stories. <laughs> <laughs> There's a uh, keep your head in your own boat. It's a great saying from Mr. Medill, who was our dragon boat coach. But he also said, come race day, if it's close, celebrate at the line. You know why? In high school athletics, they don't have photo finish. <laughs> if you act like you won, if you play the part... You might get it. It was a really good call by him, actually. Came I remember doing handy. that. We had to do the most exhausting, one of the most exhausting things I've ever had to do. We had to do a re-race. Oh, wow. They couldn't decide. It was so close, and they didn't have photo finish, and we did the whole, like, we were exhausted. We are like, ah! And they made us re-race. Did we you had, win it? We ended up winning the re-race, like, decidedly. Ooh. We were in good shape, but, like, holy fuck. We had to do a 500-meter uh, dragon boat race over again. It was really tiring. So after the goal is called back, Hall draws a tripping call, I believe, on Kucherov, and it becomes a 4-on-4 four four again. Now, let's get into the Morgan Riley thing. Yep. So this is the second period. Morgan Riley, Brayden Point, battling, going towards the corner. Uh, the, Leafs, uh, the Leafs' left corner. And... Braden Point, who is one of the strongest skaters and strongest players in the NHL, loses an edge pound for pound. in a in a uh, in a battle with Morgan Riley, and then uh, slams into the boards G- gruesomely. Yes, well, and I- your and your instant thought is my instant thought was holy shit! Did Morgan Riley just do that? That was my instant thought because it happened so fast, and you don't see Braden Point do that very often. But then you watch the replay back, and you see that it's just a it's a battle. It's a battle that ends really poorly. And I want to, well, <laughs> I'm sure this is going to go over like a wet fart on Tampa Reddit and stuff like that. But the refs did what I've been asking refs to do. And that is call a five minute major in the moment, mm-hmm. call it, because that gives you an automatic review. 
You get to review it right away. They review it. They have time to take several looks at it. They decide it's not a penalty. I mean, you have this new rule that is your get out of jail free card, right? The 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 double minor and 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 all that. We've seen it mishandled several times, and you you can call a four, and if you decide to overturn it, you can't make it zero. It's still a two, even if you got the call wrong and all that silliness. No, call the five in the moment. You get an opportunity to review, and if you don't like the call, call it back. That's what they did here. I thought exactly – that's exactly what that rule is there for. Yeah. In the second week of October, we sat in Adam's 14th house, and we <laughs> talked about we did the new rule that they are implementing this year, and that's that if they call a five-minute major, they can review it. And I thought it would go the way of – during the regular season, we'd see a whole bunch of five-minute majors they being didn't called. They did abuse it. And then they, didn't, they no. didn't go that way at all. All. But they should. I thought they would just call a whole <laughs> bunch and then you could just review it and then make sure you get it right. But they didn't use this rule at all. But now that it, it's like on everything's in a microscope, they're using it. And that's that's exactly how why it's there. It's also third period. The Leafs top defenseman, Tampa's top centerman, uh, tight playoff game. Mm-hmm. You can't get this call wrong. No. And I mean, I, like, I don't need to tell you the weight of the situation, right? Like if. If it's if this is five minutes, like you just called it, and let's say you don't get the opportunity to review, mm-hmm. I mean, game's over. Yes. Oh, yeah. Tampa's burying at least one on that power play. No, this is coming off done. the second period where the Leafs didn't show up to play, and it's five minutes into the third, and you take a five-minute major, that's like, game's over. Now, I want, to, I want to stop down here for a little bit, because it then devolves right as soon as Braden point hits the board so does morgan riley and kucherov has a arm around morgan riley's head faster than you can say go and i had absolutely no problem with tampa coming to Braden point's defense of course that's what you do none uh and that's none. what you would expect the leafs to do and a thousand percent so no kucherov problem. body slams him and yep. uh and then it devolves into sort of like a semi-line brawl like where mitch martyr doesn't know what to do quite with his body or his hands <laughs> he's just like he's like uh, you can see him on the replay. It's very funny. And then uh, it, what happens is Matthews and Stamkos become the first two 60-goal scorers in NHL, NHL history to fight each other. <laughs> yeah, which is hilarious. That. That's regular season or playoff. Yeah, ever. <laughs> now, but what's interesting about this, and I'm going to jump to the press conferences afterwards because I think it's really important that you hear this. Sure. I didn't catch this in the moment. But Sheldon Keefe, and John Tavares I saw do it first. Talk about it on the uh, in the in the uh, press conferences afterwards, and then Sheldon Keefe said this uh, afterwards, and I thought it was actually spectacular insight into the game. And you know what? It's insight into the knowledge that Tampa has in the playoffs. Classic example of a veteran championship like Tampa Bay manipulating the officials and taking advantage of a situation. Right? I mean, they know we're basically already going on the power play because of the Kucherov situation. So it's a free-for-all. They can do whatever they want, and, and they just know the way the games get called. They're not going to get another penalty. I mean, you watch that sequence back. I mean, to say that we shouldn't be on a 5 on threes. I mean, the official is literally holding Steven Stamkos with one arm and his other hand with no glove on is punching Austin Matthews. Not the red linesman. The referee who calls the penalties was holding Stamkos while this was happening. And... It's five and five. Credit to Tampa for recognizing that situation. It's it's a free pass. You do what you want, and not only do they get out of it unscathed, but they take Matthews and O'Reilly with them to the box. Brilliant play by the Lightning there in manipulating that situation. So, so that is a really that that just goes to show kind of the knowledge and the depth of knowledge that Tampa has, right? Oh, That's yeah. something like Lee fans, we've never seen that. Well, and Tampa fans, uh, I understand, were very upset with Leaf fans complaining about this and saying Sheldon was right. And on behalf of the entire fan base, I just want to apologize for Sheldon Keefe's completely valid point. Totally valid point. Absolutely nailed it. He was bang on. Be mad that he was right. Die mad that he was right. Dude, Stamkos has a glove off. And was trying to fight and is being restrained by the officials. Austin Matthews not only has both gloves on, he's holding not one, not two, but three hockey sticks. He's doing custodial duty. He's a janitor! (laughs) He's cleaning up after everybody. And Stamkos 
grabs him while mid conversation with the officials and like is he half Italian and I didn't know he it comes out he's talking with his hand and he grabs him as if to say like I need John boy to get on this as if to say oh look at this guy I'm gonna slap him oh and then he fucking slaps him and the ref said these are the same five for fighting each hilariously Keith got one thing wrong there the Leafs didn't get a power play because of the Kucherov situation it was O'Reilly and Kucherov for fighting. It was Matthews and Stamkos for fighting. Riley and Kucherov get offsetting minors for roughing. Where the Leafs got the power play, and I didn't even see this happen, could not tell you what happened, no idea what happened. Darren Radish did something to Mitch Marner, and that's how the Leafs got a power play. I didn't know Mitch Marner interacted with another human being. See, I'm so that. glad that Mitch did what he did then thanks mitch that was great i don't even like think it was even mitch not doing anything and like darren doing anything it was like the refs being like okay let's find something let's sort it out so the leafs are on the power the leafs have to be up let's just give darren radish something (laughs) yeah so it's all figured out boys sure and i mean (laughs) like you get you get a double minor for accidentally high sticking someone in the lip and they have like a little trickly kucherov i'm pretty confident broke morgan riley's nose (laughs) Oh yeah. Well, and, and two minutes. I also These are think, the same. Two minutes. It's fine. I also think that um, uh, when you look at the uh, uh, like Stamkos should have got an instigator there. A hundred. That's what an instigator is, right? And, yep. and I think a lot of people are taking it too far with Stephen Stamkos. He's dirty. In no, he's not dirty. He's I a have good all the time player. in the world for Stephen Stamkos. It, but he should have got a penalty there. Yeah. Because I mean, if that's not instigating, then what is? Mm-hmm. Right. So you have to, I mean, listen, and I I will give the refs this, honestly, and I give them very little. I will give them this. A lot happened. Oh, a lot happened. An unbelievable amount happened. And the team that should have been up was at the end of it. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it was a clean hit by Morgan Riley as ruled on the ice. It wasn't a hit. It It was just a fight. A a a little push in the back that ended unfortunately. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what happened. And if something clean within the rules happens, you can't start a line brawl. Like that's oh, against you can. That's against <laughs> the rules. Very, very key to this is when the officials reviewed the Riley Point incident, they weren't able to then review the whole following sequence, mm-hmm. right? So they weren't able to make sure that they got all of that right. And like you said, a lot happened. I know they were staring at the Stamkos thing, but at the end of the day, the Leafs do get a power play out of it, I guess. And maybe I don't know. I don't even I don't even know how to how to justify that as an official, but. The Lightning do get uh, basically three fifths of the Leafs' top power play unit off yep. the ice. That was the key thing: is is Matthews yes. is gone, and and all of their big dogs are just in the box. And the stupid the referee wouldn't blow his whistle at any point. We couldn't get a stoppage of play oh. for them to come out of the box. So the five minutes became like eight, and then it was, it was nine. like nine, and then we're sitting there like, please, somebody just freeze the puck. Do you remember that really random uh, thing with uh, Babcock from years ago where the Leafs took a five-minute major and for some reason he didn't put someone in the box to serve it? Yes. So, and it was a rule they that forgot. none of us had ever heard yeah. of ever. But if you don't do that, you don't get, an ex- you don't, no one can come on mm-hmm. because there's no one to come on. So you can't just bring an extra player in off the bench. So the Leafs had to play shorthanded for like seven minutes. Oh. They had to kill off a seven minute penalty. Oh basically. my God. Um, Mike. Yeah. The rules, Mike. <laughs> uh, uh, and in between this, and this is sort of interesting, is that, um, Luke Shen, while this is all being sorted out, right? It took like 15 minutes to just sort it out. Luke Shen is standing, and Kevin BX pointed this out, and I really respected this. This was great breaking it down. He's like, look look at Luke Shen. He's standing between the benches. Mm-hmm. He's taking all the shit. So Hagel, uh, Jeannot, and Pat Maroon are, are yelling at him. And I think it was Pat Maroon that called Luke Shen irrelevant or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, so I was trying to figure out who, yeah, who said what. I think what? it was Brandon Hagel. Don't get confused, Brandon. You haven't won shit. Don't get confused. You play with Stanley Cup champions. You ain't one. So is it Don't confirmed? get confused. Luke Shen has a ring. He has more than one ring. You don't have shit. Well, you just he was play with guys at you do. Luke. Don't get confused, yeah. Brandon. Okay. 
Yeah, he's yelling at Luke Shep. Mm-hmm. But what was okay. interesting Don't get about confused, that, Brandon, is is chirping. It's the playoffs. Nah, you sitting here chirping, Brandon Hagel. What is I like that? It. I'm in. I'm what is that? Fuck him. No, that's what it is. Let's try to try to walk you away from you no. chirping at Angel. No, there. fuck that. <laughs> yeah, don't uh, get confused, Brandon. <laughs> So it was. No. So it was. Uh, uh, Luke Shen basically said uh, to Pat Maroon that he's irrelevant, and then Hagel said he's irrelevant. Holy fuck, you stink! Is what the apparently what he said, and it's it's funny to hear the chirping back and forth. But what I liked about what BX has said was, here's a veteran defenseman who's tough. He's played on the other team. He knows these guys really well, and he's just sitting there. Taking all the abuse. Taking it's not all of it from it's, three guys. It's not Matthews. It's not Marner. It's not Nylander. It's not Tavares. It's not Riley. It's not anybody but Luke Shen. He's just taking the abuse. Taking Seemed the pretty abuse. relevant. And it was sort of like, and what how BX has said is, is that like, listen, if you want to go after any of our guys, you're coming through me. Yep. And yep. I, and you know I could throw him left. Yeah. You know oh, I could yeah. throw a left. You and, saw and it last game. We already game. know Patty doesn't want it again. Well, no. We learned that in game two. So who's is it going to be Tanner? It's not going to be Brandon. So I guess it's going to be Tanner. Well, and and Tanner Janot's not been a factor in this series for Tampa. Not really. He's been okay. Ah, he He's been the okay. Breakaway. He's got the mouth going for sure. Yeah. Mm. He's no. Mm, I not, wouldn't. I wouldn't. Not a guy you out. sent. Listen, you sent Cal Foot and four picks for this guy. Five. Five picks. I mean, come on. <laughs> Five. Six assets, dude. Yeah. Um, Matt. Matt Nyes gets a great breakaway with 15 seconds left in the period. Uh, again, a factor every time he's out there. And what else can you ask for a guy who's played less than 10 NHL games? And he's just walking into this series against the the defending Stanley Cup finalists. Can you call it that? <laughs> I didn't like uh, when he went out with Matthews and Marner because I thought the Yarn Croak Matthews Marner line was the best line all night. It was the only one I thought in the second period that didn't take a ginormous dump on the Leafs, you know, in terms of their own players shitting the bed. And I was I was curious to why Nyes was just moved to that line because he was so good. Just see, just have a gander. I but mean, that that line was so good already. So do why you know mix what, it up? Do you know what the shots were in the third period? Uh yeah, because I watched the LFR. Yeah, six three Leafs. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you're shutting down Tampa, but nothing was happening offensively. So while I agree that Yarn Crook belongs up there. I don't blame Sheldon for just being like, I don't know, let's try this shit. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just randomly throwing out something else. Because you got Mitch, who you know can fire it from distance. You have Matthews, who you know can score from in front. He did earlier in this game. And there's Nyes, whose bread and butter is the front of the net. So I understand it. And that's where Yarncroak's got most of his goals, too. So maybe it's just trying to get a left-handed look instead of a righty. Maybe it's trying to get the bigger guy. Maybe it's just trying to see what the fuck the kid can do. I don't know. I, I don't like Sheldon Keefe's coaching style when he does things like this because I think you play an entire regular season where we've sorted out, hey, Matthews, Marner, Yonker is the one we're going with. Bunting, like he's he's done on that line if he comes back or whatever. Like we're doing this line. No chance. Yeah. It's the playoffs. It's the third period. This isn't the well, time. Well, we're to- still in the second technically at this point, but yes. Oh, yeah, I'm yes. talking about when he was out there the third and yep. they were going for it. And it's like, okay, this isn't the time to try stuff. But he always seems to be like, okay, when it's uh, the chips are all on the table, I'm going to try a thing. I, I, and I, I, that always bothers I me. I kind of liked it. This one like, I liked. We didn't like it when Willie was at center in an elimination No, game. because that was stupid. That, but I mean, Nice was playing. He switched, position position he switched his position, though. That yeah. was the problem, right? Yeah. He started the game at center for no reason. Like yeah. it was that was to but me that was stupid. This is a smaller version of that. I see. I like it because Matt Nice has been smaller. so good, and you're giving him a shot. You're almost giving him like a tap, like, "Hey, uh, you've played well enough. I'm going to give you just a shot on the first line. It's one shift, a challenge and and if he guys. if he plays the way he was playing uh, on the third line with the first line, then you if you're Sheldon Keefe, you got nothing to worry about." Right. And yeah. he did. And it was one shift and it was over. I understand what you mean with the line blender, Jesse, because we have PTSD from that. Like the the Nylander at center against Columbus. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Marlowe out there in the final minutes against Boston. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that was ba- oh, that was Babcock. Again. That was Babcock. Yeah, no, I, yeah, know, I know it was Babcock, but yeah, it the doesn't blend, matter. The blender <laughs> shit's crazy. One thing I want to I want to go with this after I the second period. <laughs> The Leafs barely pressed Tampa in the Ozone, so it was really hard for them to expect to get any penalties going their way. They're, they're frankly, with the Morgan Riley situation, lucky they got a penalty at all. Uh, or, sorry, a power play at all. But the other thing I, I want to say is Giordano's looking a bit overmatched, and I'm wondering when his passes go back to 
to players rather than dumping it down the ice. It's not. That's it was not does. good. No, he tries his best to gain center and he dumps it down. And I think he's a useful player. He got walked like a dog by mm-hmm. Kucherov. There, there was some. Now, to be fair, it's Kucherov. I know, but man, I mean, one thing that seemed obvious is Keith really struggled to keep Hall Giordano away from Tampa's most dangerous players. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what the ice time shook down to, but it definitely felt like that pair played way too much. Right. Sorry, I, I got my periods mixed up. The Morgan Riley Braden Point thing did happen in the third. That's my apologies on that. I didn't even catch these. Um, the Leafs. Uh, um, uh, the Leafs also lost uh, Matthews and O'Reilly for like closer to nine minutes, not five minutes. Yeah. We're because there was no yeah because there's no whistle sorry we're, i'm we're just rolling I, I got my mixed up in my notes here yeah. um i might get coffee number two mid show so <laughs> yeah no no kidding yeah. um so uh that so you're right jesse nice matthews marner did hit it hit the ice about and 5 that's 30 the line that scored yes like that's the, yeah Matt, so, was on the ice when that goal went in the leafs pull the like, goalie good ozone cycle nice is out there with the big boys and then o'reilly scores in tight and I want to talk about O'Reilly for From a second. From Willie, who wasn't useless. That's right. He was great. I want to talk about O'Reilly for a second, guys. Because with a minute to go in the game, Sheldon said this after the game. In years before, we didn't win games like this. The Leafs did not win games like this. He nailed that. Nailed that. He was great. They did win after this one. Game. Mm-hmm. And O'Reilly... <laughs> Um, (laughs) O'Reilly not only scores the goal that ties it up and sends it to overtime, but then blocks a shot from Victor Hedman with like a second left to go. Warrior. Right off his skate. Warrior. What, what's the word that you would ascribe to what Morgan Riley brings to the Leafs that they just did not have before? Ryan O'Reilly? Yeah. You said Morgan. Morgan. I meant Ryan O'Reilly. So names are not my thing today. Samsonov brings. No, uh, irreplaceable. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly is absolutely irreplaceable. They have not had a player like this, certainly in the Matthews era. Um, we talk about how this team misses and was never able to replace Nazem Kadri, which is true. It's not the same. It's not the same. Uh, this guy brings something entirely different. A true two-way player glares in Jesse's direction. <laughs> a true two-way player who can get it done at both ends of the ice. Um, he's a bit of a throwback. God, I love him. God, I hope he stays. Jesse, what name? What would you? What would be the word that you would ascribe to Ryan O'Reilly and what he did in that last sequence? Oh God, he's a he's a playoff performer. Like you look at his numbers and the dichotomy from his regular season numbers to his playoff numbers. I don't know what he has in him that makes him know that hey, this is the moment I need to step up. And he, but he does it. It's unreal. Yeah. In a game where basically every skater looked pretty futile Mm -hmm. he didn't adam what did the leafs give up for ryan o'reilly uh who cares who cares don't even know off the top of my head don't even know worth every everything so the thing with two i i think for him and what he brings is guts he's he's all fucking guts all the time and and what i'm seeing from at least and i hope i'm seeing this what i think i'm seeing is the players on the leafs that never saw this on their team before because you can agree that the Leafs have never had a player like Ryan O'Reilly in the in this generation not that resume it's almost sometimes like you see somebody who's done it before and you see them do it and you're like oh I can do that I can also be gutsy in a in a tight if Ryan O'Reilly can do it I could for sure do it it's sometimes it's just having the guy around and he you know there was shots of him Firing up the team, yelling down the uh, yeah. yelling down the boards and that sort of thing from the bench, like getting the team on the bench fired up. Um, I think that there's something with him that it's like, well, if he can do it, I for sure can do it too. You need a her- sometimes you need a heroic performance that isn't your goalie. You know what I mean? The Leafs have gotten that a few times over the years, mm-hmm. but what goes into that is you just getting shelled. Yep. Right, and the goalie trying their absolute damnedest. Sometimes you need a guy who puts you on his back and forces you all the way up the ice. (laughs) And Ryan O'Reilly gave the Leafs as heroic a playoff performance as we've seen in decades. Now, going into overtime before it even starts, I wanted to get, if you guys can remember, how you felt between the third period and overtime. Like I had to go to the bathroom so bad. So we prepare uh, highlights and stuff for first intermission on the streams and for second intermission. And uh, for the intermission before overtime, I'm like, uh, guys, can I just, can I go? And they're like, no, 
Like, like this is live on the broadcast. They're like, we, we need to prepare this. We're, we're not ready yet. You mm-hmm. know, um, uh, we can just put up a slate that says we'll be right back. And there's like 30, 40,000 people in there watching the stream. And I'm like, fuck that. I'm not leaving. <laughs> so while I was just tap dancing while they were uh, preparing the highlights. And then as soon as they said it was ready, ran, did my thing, came back. And they're like, okay, highlights are going to be done in three and a half minutes. I said, fuck that. Put me in. So they put me in and I'd start talking over the highlights randomly. So, so that's how I felt. That's okay. how I was going through okay. the nerves. Uh, okay. Piss aside. How did you actually feel as a Leaf fan? I'm not asking about your hopeful. bowels. I want to know. Hopeful. You felt hopeful. I, f- I felt hopeful. Interesting. Um, there wasn't the feeling of fucking it up and letting the other team tie it and you and trying to convince myself, no, you know what? They can still do it. No. It was, we're fucking doing this. And they didn't have a great overtime. Hold on. <laughs> I'm asking Jesse next. Do they do they have stuff prepared now just in case it goes to overtime? Have they thought of that? That uh, there's a possibility that an NHL playoff game could go to overtime. There, there may be a conversation. There was a minute left, dude. Like I don't know. I'm not. No. I hey, don't put words in my mouth. I'm not blaming anybody. I think he is. He's ba- blaming the. I am staff. not. It was uh, a wonderful crew behind the scenes. What do you do? What do you do between the first and second intermission? Do you just go sit in the couch? Uh, sometimes sh- I'll go cool upstairs. Down. Sometimes I'll. Um, refill up on water. Mm. It's not a whole lot. Then mosey around. Yeah, I'll check Twitter, regret it, close it. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. That's about it. Not a whole lot. Like I only have usually like eight minutes. Oh, true. Sure. So Jesse, how did you feel between the periods? I just hope they get it done. Like I, it's these moment, like we'll get to the end of it. But it's really they had an opportunity to steal a game that they had no business winning. And that was no business. <laughs> that was that was None. kind of the the theme of the game, you know. The Leafs shouldn't be in overtime right now, um, and they rarely. This is these are the ones where really great teams get lucky in these situations. You know, they they find a way to win these games that they should absolutely not win. And the Leafs had a chance there to become one of those great teams and be like, okay, you look back on whatever run they're going to go on during the playoffs, and it's like, wow. Remember when they got beat to the ground by Tampa Bay for two straight periods and somehow won the game in overtime? Mm-hmm. They had that opportunity. I was just really hoping that they would come through. Here we go. This is what everyone was looking for. What is it? The deserve to win meter from thing. moneypuck.com. The thing's useless. The Leafs in you know what? I th- this one feels right. This, this one does actually feel right. This feels generous. The Leafs were expected to win after 500 game simulations only 27.8% of the time. That feels generous. Yeah. You're telling me you're going to win more than three out of every four times? The, or no sorry, way. what one out of every four times? The way that they... Fuck that. No, no way. No. They had no, no way. business being in that game, and they were magically by some leaf god who was looking upon the team that night last night and they won it it was unreal yeah his well, name was Elia samson and they didn't come out strong like no. they came out and tampa was skating faster and you know what's interesting about tampa is they do little things like their passes are crisp and i know that sounds so stupid but when your passes are crisp the puck moves faster you can change faster and they feel like they're coming on faster the leaves were holding the puck a little too long they were a little sluggish. Their, their passes, especially, I, I shouted out Giordano a little bit, and I hate bragging on the guy because I love Giordano. But like, as soon as you, as, as soon as like Matt Nyes, even I could I could accuse of this. He does one move and then he does two moves and he's going for the third move. And by that time, you've already slowed down so much. Tampa's going to be all over you. You can do that in college. You can't do that in the NHL. You can't. And I think the Leafs need to. In this instance, and and going forward, they're going to have to be a lot crisper on those those passes. They're going to really have to start looking because Tampa was all over them, full court press all the way through that OT. The Leafs are missing a guy to injury, but it's it's a depth guy, so you don't notice it nearly as much. But part of me wonders if Sheldon Keefe would like a look at Eric Gustafson um, because the knock on him is he's not great defensively, but he can move the puck. Has Gio been good defensively? No. There's no he, way Geo comes out of the lineup. Well, this no. Is, yeah. uh, you fold the team before you bench Geo. Man, we do this. <laughs> we do point, this Jesse. with guys, though. We, there's no way you scratch Jason Spezza, and there's no way you scratch Wayne Simmons or and Joe some, Thornton or Joe Thornton. And they lost when they didn't scratch him. When at they some have. point, every 
vet story has its breaking point, and I wonder when Geo's is coming. He's still under contract next year. Well, Which, no, he's still a valuable player. Just yeah, I don't have a problem with it. It's just I don't. Perhaps he's having a bad run of games here. Mm-hmm. He was very good at the beginning of the year. Uh, got them through a lot of injuries on their defense. I think he's still valuable, but I think they're finding out what positions they can play him in and put him in fairly. Also, they didn't. They refused come hell or high water to rest him, and then they rested him a whole big bunch. And part of me is like, mm, what's going on there? Mm. Could what's be finding something there? now. When it comes to the goal, the Leafs did something that they never fucking do, and it drives me One. crazy. Well, they that, <laughs> that, and they never shoot from Let's the go. point. They never shoot from the point. And Morgan Riley just threw one. Shot it. It was awesome. Holla Hall, Hall just hit the post, too. They did it again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, right? That Justin Hall post? Oh. Like, a fucking scream. I was like, as soon as that post hit, I'm like, fuck. Fuck, this is just to Don't let this happen to us again. Not this uh, time. Not this all time. over again. No. Yeah. Morgan Riley has five points in three games. What do you say about playoff Morgan Riley? Dude, I tell you what, I gave Nyes a lot of credit for the screen. I think Vasilevsky saw this thing. You do? I don't yeah, know. I'd I have do. to see that again. It the only he might have been screened partially by his own player who was engaged with Nyes. Mm-hmm. It's just a great shot from Morgan Riley. And I tell you what, how do you evaluate the goalies in that game? Without saying Samsonov severely outdueled Vasilevsky. He did. He did. He made more saves. He made bigger saves. He had a tougher workload. He outdueled arguably the worst, or sorry, whoops, arguably the <laughs> best goalie in the world. And certainly the best playoff goalie in the world. It's the strangest thing, too, because the Leafs kind of ran Vasilevsky's show for most of the series last year, certainly not at the end. Um, and they still weren't able to come out with the win. And then you see him going to rounds two, three, and four, and you're like, Jesus, no one can beat this fucking guy. Mm-hmm. How did we come so close? And yet so far, Samsonov out duel him, and he's clearly battling something. So m- my question to kind of sum up the game is the Leafs did not deserve to win this game, but they did. And they did it in <laughs> overtime. And when it mattered, they scored. When in this generation have we ever seen this? Like if you're if you're a thirty mid thirties Leaf fan like us, mm. we've had three major good spots in the last thirty years. That's the early nineties with Gilmore and Sundin and Clark, and uh, then the late nineties with Cujo and then Belfour in the early two thousands, and then this one. That's all we've had. The only time they've really won a playoff game that they didn't deserve to at all, taking out the game four against Columbus, which is cartoony bullshit, against an injured goalie. Probably Game 5, Boston 2019, which is the game that saved Mike Bob- Babcock's job. Would have been worth it to lose it. Um, <laughs> ah, they lost him 20 games later anyway, so. Fuck. But um, that's the that's the only one I can think of, really. And, and it still doesn't come close to this. Come close to this. I mean... How many times, you know, it's, it's funny. It's difficult to think of these instances because how often do the Leafs get dominated these days? It's not a lot. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. It's pretty rare. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were able to come up with it. Well, and, and that's, that's the thing that, you know, it goes back to what Sheldon Keefe said after the game when he was saying, like, usually we don't win this game. Like in, in previous years, we have not won this game. And I wonder what they think this morning, because, you know, in previous seasons, this games like this would be a... Uh, they'd be a backbreaker. And I also want to run through the points for you here, by the way, currently. Sure. Mitch Marner, and, and and I don't know if you saw the Tampa broadcast. Mitch Marner, not a not a playoff performer, gets his seventh goal in his 40th playoff game was, was or something. That, was that Bucci Gross? I, th- I think I so. Think that was in game two. Yes. Yeah. Mitch Marner has eight points in three games. Leads the entire NHL. No one else even has seven. Ryan O'Reilly, Five points in three games. Morgan Riley, five points in three games. Austin Matthews, five points in three games. Tavares, four points in three games, including a hat trick. Nylander's got four. Those are the guys you need to perform. And by the way, Yarn Croak has got two. But uh, the stars are showing up. The stars are showing up. Yeah. Riley is one point back of Adam Fox for most points from a defenseman in the NHL so far. Yeah, man. In the playoffs. In the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> important. Important. <laughs> so what I, what, I, what I meant to say was when, when it matters. Um, so let me ask you about, because John Cooper, again, is known as like. He's the, leading him in overtime winners. <laughs> I uh, uh, Midway through John Cooper's press conference, Natalie looks at me and she's like, oh, man, I'm, I'm not feeling so confident about the Leafs anymore. And I said, aha, 
he got to you. And she's like, what are you talking about? Mm. And I said, you know who John Cooper is, right? Because we're watching him. And she's like, I don't know. And I'm like, it's the guy we're watching on screen right now. He's known for this. Don't fall for it. He's using his Jedi mind tricks on you. I know exactly why she fell for it. Why did she fall for it? You know what John Cooper was before he was an NHL coach? Uh, teacher. Lawyer. Lawyer. He's a lawyer. Yeah. Get out of here. He's so good. You knew that. We've mentioned oh, that I, I, on the show before. Fuck you. You think I'm going to remember that? <laughs> I can't remember shit. Why do you think I write it all down? Lawyer. It worked on her. Um, so the first thing he talked about, first off, he said he liked the team's game. And I don't think how, he's like, I just didn't like the result. And and how can you argue with that? He's Fair. right. Fair he's right. Um, he asked on the goal that was called back, which would have been the 4-2 goal. Yep. What did the ref have to gain by blowing the whistle early on Sammy. And Field. he called it early, and I thought that was interesting. He lost the view of the puck. That's kind of that's what referees do, you know, when they can't see the puck, they blow it dead. What did he have to gain? He did his job. Yeah. <laughs> he couldn't see the puck and also it was wedged under Sammy's pad. The goalie made a save and then the puck disappeared. I think that is the referee's but he time said, to blow the whistle. And here's what John Cooper does. He's like, "Myself, the bench, and 20,000 other people saw it." Oh, yeah. Do you no- think those people are unbiased observers? <laughs> Notably reliable. <laughs> oh, fuck. Why haven't we tried that? <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> do, like- do you think every time we go ref, you suck, they go, do I? <laughs> <laughs> Should I do something else? Uh, Should I go work at Costco or some shit? Yeah. Dude, John. I think John's losing his touch. The Lightning uh, fans were also uh, chanting, let's go home. Let's go home. Were they? Yeah. I'm pretty sure they were chanting that in the arena. As in, like, let's wrap this up and go home. Oh, I couldn't hear it. Uh, And uh, I just thought it was kind of great that they had to go home like that. Well, not before shouting at the general manager well we'll get to that i gotta i gotta got stay on i gotta i gotta stay oh, I on thought i was doing the press go no no it's right good there. let me let me spin it though was... um right uh uh i think uh oh no i guess so i wanted to do one do one quick thing that grab tweeted out about ryan o'reilly um assist on the opening goal game tying goal face off win and assist on the overtime winning goal god i love him grab or ryan o'reilly Yes. Uh, did you see the Dubas and Spezza celebration of the tying goal and the winning goal? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I wish I could play them, but they're part of the game footage, so I can't. Scotty I wish, Barnes. I wish I could inject it. Scotty Barnes from the Raptors was there. Um, and it's worth mentioning, too, when I watched both press conferences, both coaches hated the refs in uh, in this game. Both sides felt like they got jobbed. I am going to say something. And that something means it's a good game. Very unpopular. Yep, that means they did a good job. Mm-hmm. Now, sorry, the point that I missed on Sheldon Keefe's thing and why I desperately hope he does not get fined today, when he said, ah, well, we weren't going to get that call, right? They're not, they're not going to call that penalty on Stamkos. They knew they could get away with anything. The only penalties called from the beginning of the third period onward happened during a literal line brawl. Otherwise, there was nothing in the third. No whistles. Nothing in mm-hmm. the overtime. And if you watch my stream, you know I'm being honest. There were moments where I was like, okay, Tampa clearly is getting a penalty here. And they didn't. And the Leafs are clearly getting a penalty here. And it didn't come. That's They officiated a playoff game the way they officiate every playoff game. Yep. And Anarchy. In I do third. think it was interesting that Sheldon said that because I think it's sort of like a little... I, I think it was a way of, he didn't attack the refs. He just said, congrats, like Tampa is really smart at this. They're good at this. They And, and he gave them the compliment. And by the way, the Lightning deserve that compliment. They know exactly what to do in every situation. It's why they've won two cups in the last three years. Every team does this. Every good team does this. Right. Right. So, so but but it's interesting because I don't know that they're going to be able to do that same thing again. If the Tampa? exact same play were to happen, are the refs going to look at that differently now because of those comments? Uh I don't know. Uh, Do you not think so? Well, I mean, we're getting into deeper and deeper waters, and we showed the charts uh, last episode. The deeper you go into a series, the fewer calls there are. And the bigger a factor Perry becomes. Now. Cano becomes. Maroon becomes. Belmar becomes. All those guys. They become bigger factor. They become a bigger factor. Okay. Well, can't let it get that late. Uh, Now. Uh, Steve mentioned it earlier. Jesse, I have the I've sent you the clip of uh, this is this is fan footage, so we don't have to worry about playing it. Uh, the Kirk and Tobers on Twitter. 
cl- super classy Toronto Maple Leafs GM yelling at hashtag goal boats, uh, bolts fan after the O'Reilly uh, hit on point, which is actually the Morgan Riley hit on point. Um, yeah, I was really confused. I was like, are you talking about the tying goal or the hit? Well, here, so, so have a look and you can play the audio too. Can't really hear him there. So there's just some chirping. Look at Spezza just chilling. Yeah, you can't hear what Dubas says. Now, see if you can hear it here, because I just sent you a closer look, Jesse, from a new angle as of this morning. This is from Buffy Clements 1972 on TikTok. This is real close. You have to keep talking. Oh, okay. we'll keep talking. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, <laughs> it's a really, this is a really <laughs> tight angle on, on Dubas. It's right underneath him. Here we go. You're 10 feet away from an NHL GM. That's crazy. Maybe. Oh I mean, a lot of- one more time. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Why is he so upset? They, okay, so what I don't like is, like, listen, if we find footage that this encounter with Kyle Dubas did literally drop out of the sky, then I'll apologize. My theory is it didn't. My theory is these fans who are sitting unusually close Mm -hmm. to a box that had uh, an NHL GM in it um, were saying some shit. One of them said, the caption for the video says, go back to fucking Canada. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, And I think that was probably the lightest chirp. Yeah. And, like, I, I was, and like, listen, I'm not trying to say, like, Tampa fans are bad. No. Well, this fans is... Are better. I, would, I would never say As that. soon as you bring class into it, what happens? I mean... When someone says, that's classless, Steve. It's funny how seldomly you ever hear that word during the regular season. It always comes to the forefront in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. It's always, it just, everyone remembers it all of a sudden. And, the, the and they've playoffs, lost the argument immediately. That's what I'm looking for. See, Steve will never give me what exactly, he knows what answer I'm looking for, but he'll always sidestep it for a couple sentences. I, lo- and, I always love taking the scenic route. I'm just Adam, trying to, just trying to get it. We're not on the radio, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're not getting to Taylor Swift. The cl- I get to say whatever the fuck. The, cl- the classless thing is funny because the playoffs are known for, for being classless. I don't, know, I don't understand what people expect class. Yeah. Now, I mean, when you put fans that close to the action, shit's going to happen. Totally. We, we talked about this with uh, the Jays. So they, they did renovations to the uh, Rogers Center, and now the fans are right up on the visiting dugout, and weirdly, it has led to an increase in incidents. Mm-hmm. Strange, right? Strange. Uh, like I, and like, I feel like fans uh, in Toronto are not able to do that because... The it's GMs a, are super high. It's a gondola. Yeah. So your seats are underneath where the GM is And that's is on purpose. Uh, I mean, it's a pretty good idea, isn't it? Yeah. Now, but it also, like, it doesn't look like, it's very obviously not like a managerial gondola. It looks like he's in a box. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. Like an unsold box. It's an older arena. We should arena. ask uh, CJ. Is it? Exactly. Yeah, it's not. I a, thought it was newer. It's not brand new. It's not brand new. We, we, CJ would know exactly where Dubas sits, you know, and mm-hmm. like if that is a is a box and everything, because we're kind of just guessing. Well, right? it is. It is a box. He's in this. It's it's at the top of the. Um, yeah. it's the top of the lower bowl. Yeah, it's a box. But like, is that where GMs normally sit? That's you know? where. Um, that's where Breezewell was. Breezewell's one it exactly the same. Mm-hmm. So I'm so assuming maybe that's just how the yeah. building's designed. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, long story short, it doesn't really matter. It's it's yeah. just that's the kind of shit that your uncle who hates Kyle Dubas because he wears glasses should get into. He should be fired up that the GM is chirping fans. I don't like the width of his tie. A uh, couple of tweets I wanted to read to you guys. Um. That this is the this is the psychology of Leaf fans. Proud of the boys. I never believed in them. <laughs> <laughs> and another one. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is from, by the way, that is from P.H. Tevins. Uh, and then this one's from... Uh, Tevins? Tevins. And then this Let's one's go. from Corwin MC. Worst, worst Leaf game ever. What a win. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. I mean, right? Absolutely the Leafs. That's the Leafs. Absolutely. <laughs> Fuck, I love this team. God damn them. Uh, <laughs> that's great, right? Oh, uh, that's good shit. So here, the, the, the one thing that I want to ask you guys is what do they need to do to not let Tampa run them over for a period and a half like they did last night? Oh, I mean, the most important leaf right now is Sheldon Keefe, unfortunately. Sheldon Leaf. Sheldon Leaf. <laughs> no, because, I mean, I like everything he said after the game. John Cooper put him in a headlock for half an hour, at least. Um, the third period, when... Tampa just decided to completely uncharacteristically let their foot off the gas is what led the Leafs back into the game. And it was still Tampa's best defensive effort of the entire game. Yeah. Um, the Leafs just happened to break through it. So the Leafs need to find, uh, I, I think it starts with their breakout. Um, the Leafs couldn't get out of their own zone. They couldn't navigate the neutral zone. They couldn't even breach the Tampa blue line. Um, and they weren't able to get any sustained pressure. Like, you know, you asked for something specific, but there isn't a thing they don't need to do better. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so that's a good way to define after that a win, gonna, By the way, I asked Sports Interaction for their odds. Uh, Austin Matthews fights again versus Tampa in the first round. Uh, no. 10 to 1. They're going to be 10 to 1 odds. So you can go into the Dangles Doozy section right now at sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. And you could put two bucks on Matthews potentially fighting again with his two reconstructed wrists. I know. I could see him losing his mind if Tampa's like up big in an elimination game or something. I could, well, then you like, win. That's the only way. It's the only way. That's yeah, possible. Okay. Just throwing that out there. Okay. I was very proud of that one. I thought that was a good one. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. So... The thing that happened right before the Leaf game, and I was like, as soon as this happened, I was like, glad that's not us. Hopefully, it's not us tonight. Oh. Double overtime. 4-1 leads. Oh, gosh. Not yeah. so easy, is well, it? Well, how, how, guys, as Leaf fans, Jesse, Steve, how confident are you in the 4-1 score if it's in your favor? Uh, like, uh, slightly better than we're doomed. Do you like, feel better I, than... I don't feel good <laughs> until the final horn. See, I feel better about 3-1 or 5-1 than I do about 4-1. I become an absolute, you know what? Fuck, you're right. But I become an absolute mathematician when uh, the Leafs are up big at the uh, in the final few minutes of a game. Okay, so that means they would have to score a goal every two minutes. And then, okay, now, so now it's every 90 seconds. That's still doable. They could do it. Now it's every 45 seconds, which I have seen happen several times. So there's no such thing as an irrational fear when it comes to this team. Every 20 seconds, you know what? I'm starting to feel pretty good. Is that the horn? That's the horn. I'm relieved. Jesse? I'm going to take the next two and a half hours to cool down and go to bed. I asked Steve first because Jesse, uh, if you're ever feeling anxious about anything, Jesse's not. Yeah, no, uh, an NHL team should be very confident about a 4-1 lead. I think I think Vegas should have been very happy with the position they were in, and they should have never let the Jets back into that game. And for everyone who had the Jets as the upset, uh, I see it. I'm sorry. I was, I was, I think, too high on Vegas. Well, Vegas scored twice in the first, once in the second. Uh, sorry, twice in the first, twice in the second. They're up 4-1 going into the third. And by the way, this is, again, the first home playoff game with fans in Winnipeg since 2019. Imagine I told you in 2019 that would be the last time until 2023. You wouldn't believe me. No. You'd be like, fuck off. No way. How? The, for the way the Jets were playing, no way. But uh, it's not the Leafs this time. Jack Eichel, by the way, unbelievable. His first playoffs, he's already got uh, three total goals. He had three points in this one. Um, and I, I'm going to rewind to the beginning because I think this guy's, well, this name is going to come up again. Keegan Colasar from Brandon, Manitoba, uh, threw a big hit in the first minute, got into a good fight right afterwards, scores to make it 4-1 in his first career playoff goal. Now, you guys, I'm sure you saw the replay last night of him chirping a fan. He was like looking a fan in the eye. According to Sportsnet's Dan Murphy, he wasn't. Mm. So he was going head to head with a guy. Uh, and the guys like, oh, and like they're yelling at each other through the glass. According to Dan Murphy, family friends that own a winery were behind the fan in the front row. That's who he was staring down because he wants free wine now. That's according to Dan Murphy. 
Isn't that, what a wild story, eh? So the fan in the front thought he was looking at him, but he was actually looking at the, the because he's from Brandon, right? He knows people in the area. That's hilarious. Were they wearing jet stuff? I'm sure they were. I can't, you can't see them. You can only see the first guy. That's pretty funny. Good story, eh? The dude's losing his mind. Yeah. Keegan's probably like, I, I, I don't, don't know, know this guy. Right. Yeah. Uh, Nino Niederreiter uh, kicks off the scoring in the third with a really super sneaky Nino Niederreiter type goal. Great pickup. Uh, yeah, man. Like, is that guy an underrated guy his entire career? Yeah, he's just one of those guys who's just always worth a second round pick. Helps your team be better than okay. the other one. Uh, six <laughs> minutes, six minute mark. Mark Shifley scores his first of the series on the power play. And then in the final minute, um, you've got Lowry and Nemestikov in front of the net, and they're not being moved. Nemestikov is a pretty good pickup, too. He's he's done stuff with Tampa. He's 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 kind of bopped around, but he sort of always is there somewhere. He's always in the top top tw- uh, top nine. And teams don't know what to do with players with untapped potential, uh, or they don't know how to adjust their expectations. Because I want to say he was like a top ten, top twenty pick. And he's never really become that, but he's still useful. And teams, like, players like that seem to break people's brains. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lowry then bangs at home. Uh, he's been great. It's bananas. And nothing happens in the first overtime. And as a Leaf fan, you're watching that going, God, again, I was saying, like, oh, jeez. I don't know if I could handle this kind of stress. Little did I know. Because oh. it happened before the Leaf we game. almost got there. Uh, and, um, and then, uh, uh, of course... 340 into double OT, just a random pass off Barbashev's. It goes off Barbashev's skate randomly uh, in the Winnipeg defensive zone. Barbashev was a great pick. Well, the Leafs apparently wanted to get Achari, O'Reilly, and Barbashev in the one trade. They just could not make the assets (gasps) work. Um, Oh, my God. And and it skirts out to Michael Amadio, who is open in the slot. Leaf legend. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Of course, another guy claimed off waivers from the Leafs. He buries it. It's his first playoff goal. Game over. Comeback stopped. Holy shit. What a game. That's so, awesome. St- Steve, you mentioned something earlier that I thought was very interesting because um, you said, like, you can see the upset potential in with Winnipeg with Vegas. And there hasn't been, like, a lot of... of watching of the Vegas Golden Knights this season. They've kind of gone, like, under the radar. They weren't really dominant. No one likes them. Nobody really likes them. No one likes them anymore. <laughs> um, they finished first in the Western Conference, mm-hmm. surprisingly. And they did it through not really being good at anything. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys know the stats about Vegas, but uh-huh. this is how they win games. So they're blowing good. three goal leads. They're gonna not be in it. They're gonna screw up a whole bunch. But in the end, they always just seem to have one more goal than their opponent. So I'm gonna give you some numbers. All right, give it, give it. I'm ready. Goals I'm ready. four per game. Vegas Golden Knights were 14th this year. That is the definition of mid. The goals against per game. Vegas Golden Knights were, uh, where is it? 11? No, I gotta resort it. They were 11th. This year, very mid power Higher mid power play percentage. The Vegas Golden Knights were 18th mid Penal- lower end of mid penalty kill percentage. They were 19th Ooh. mid the uh, Vegas Golden Knights in save percentage. I believe I had it here. They were one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh. Oh, uh, that's good. OK, it's. That's the first time you said that. <laughs> we haven't, yeah, yeah, we haven't cracked the top ten until now. The Vegas Golden Knights all year long have not been particularly good at anything. God, that's so They're strange. not a high scoring team. Yeah, They're not a great defensive team. They won team. the West. They get timely goaltending all the time, but they find ways to crunch out these victories and get these random uh, goals and just find a way to win. So I wonder if we see them struggle a lot versus the Jets. But they pull out the series. They go to the next round. They, everybody says, oh, Vegas is a little shaky. You know, They find a way to win the next round. Because that's how they've done it all year. All the way to winning the entire Western Conference by doing nothing in particularly well. I've... I misunderstood their game. That is, you know, it's fascinating. That is that that is amazing, Jesse. That whole stat. And it's it, maybe it just goes to show, too, that the West wasn't that good. Like, the West wasn't that good. And we're so conditioned the way we grew up, especially in our early 20s, to think the West is always good. I just, I, for, a, for like 10 years, I just accepted, well, the West is better than the East. 
And it's been a bit of a mind fuck mm-hmm. in the last five years to see that shift and shift quickly. It was the way better conference for a lot of our formative yeah. years. And also, you're going to look at that and go, what about Detroit? They were in the West. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. They were in the West at the time. Absolutely. Yeah. It's. It, I mean, when you consider L.A., Chicago, uh, all the California teams, Colorado. Nashville was really good for a while there. St. Louis couldn't break it, and then they did. You know, like St. Louis, you forget. St. Louis was like a, 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 they were like the Carolina Hurricanes currently of the West for 15 years. The Sharks were the Sharks of the West? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I don't know sharks. if anybody can shark out shark the Sharks. No one was more sharkier than the Sharks. It's true. Yeah. It's crazy. And you think about that. They're just the crazy talent on those teams. And it's all sort of diffused to the Atlantic Division. <laughs> so one last thing on the Jets and the Golden Knights before we head to New York, New Jersey. Because I know Jesse's just chomping at the bit. I gotta. We got to talk about somebody. Weird, random, <laughs> random nothing play means Josh Morrissey is done for the series. Oh my gosh, that fucking sucked. They're that doomed. sucked. Oh gosh, yeah. you feel for the dude. So again, I was prepping for the stream. What happened? I he literally it was a uh, it, it, Jesse will pull it up here, yeah. but it's like, and I, I forget even who it was. I think it was Zach Whitecloud that he hit, uh, and he doesn't even no no player falls. There's no really weird angle, but you can see him kind of take a step back, and his whole back straightens up. And you know when you're you're in pain, oh. your whole back just straightens up like like a board. It 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 just that's my one bit of medical expertise when it comes to the NHL. You know, whenever a guy hurts their back, I'm like, that's they hurt their back. <laughs> that's, you know how you get did, to carnival? By the way, practice. Do we know what Hedman? Uh, do we know Hedman hurt? No idea. Eric Cernak will not play in Game Four. By the way. Okay. I just want you to know there's John Cooper press conference quotes coming in because they're doing another con- press oh, conference. Yeah. And he's like, I don't understand what he means by manipulating the refs. Well, I know you don't. Uh, he, of course he does. But he's, he's going to say that. Shut up, I just think that's hilarious. And then uh, he's like, he's like, I thought the Morgan Riley play was reckless. And then he's hoping that Braden Point plays tomorrow, which means he is. Matty, you can't show this well, he or played. any of this. Ma- but Steve, this no. was the Josh Morrissey injury. Here we go. By the way, yeah. I'm convinced Braden Point is made of adamantium. Like... So, oh, okay. Right there. There there it is. It's a nothing thing. That, that's it. Can you, like, we're showing you the injury. And he Me? just. That's well, it. Nobody's quite sure because he skated off under his own uh, thing. It does look like, it, if again. I were to guarantee, if I were to guess, it, it, it would seem that something, something got torn in his knee. Not, not a full tear, maybe just that partial, but like. It's a lower body injury. That's all we know. Um, it a lot of the comment actually says uh, it looks like a right knee injury, but we're unsure. Only thing I can think is because there's a a bit of a vulnerable area if you stretch out uh, between where your sh- your knee slash shin pad sort of ends and your hockey pants. If they ride up a bit, you're basically just hitting tendon right like there's no like right above your kneecap there's no meat really i mean on nhl players there there may be because those guys are stallions but um even still there's there's a bit of an area where there's just nothing there i it looked like he might have hyper extended it for a very very short amount of time it's just nothing happened on that play (laughs) i'm very surprised he skated off on his own power and he's done for the series. Yeah, he yeah. Hobbled. Very surprised. Yeah, he hobbled a little, you know, to the bench. If he was the, he was favoring his right knee. That's where people. I know. My, my, so just to give you an idea, if if he did rupture like a tendon or something like that, Natalie had to re- have her knee reconstructed because she was a competitive soccer player, and she said that um, she got injured on the field. She was it's like screaming in pain, and then because of the swelling, they didn't know what it was, and so they never. And I guess she was like eighteen at the time, so. Um, she went on playing, and oh, no. and uh, a year later she was walking and her knee collapsed. Mm. And because you can you can walk off and skate off under injuries like that. And I wonder if it was yeah. like a partial tear. Can't, I wouldn't imagine it was a full because he'd be done for the playoffs. It was full, right? He's done for the. He's done for the series, is what oh, Bonus said. Right, right. So it's hard to know. My assumption, whenever they write out of the gate, because that was what game three. Whenever they write out of the gate, say a guy, four games from now will not be playing. My assumption is it's an injury you cannot 
fix do treatment on yeah right it's yeah. something that will it's a three to four months surgery process. or a lengthy rehab like like mcdavid didn't get surgery on his pcl but it was a like a six month rehab, something wild like right. that, right? Hard to remember, hard to imagine that he ever went through that with the speed he has. It's crazy. It's so crazy. Maybe it made him better. We'll talk about that uh, coming up. An alien. So New York, New Jersey, and I know Jesse's been dying to talk about this. I just want to say, uh, if your team abandons the starter they've had all year for a rookie goaltender in Game Three, how's the series going? Not great. Not great, Bob. Not great for that team. Except that it worked out okay because uh, Akira Schmid made 35 saves last night. Unreal. Crazy. Now, Jesse, uh, what did you want to say about this game? Because it was obviously very, very tough. Oh, no. That's that's what I want to say. Oh, sorry. Akira Schmid is, is like, where did that come from? There's oh. a dude who openly admitted, like, I am very nervous about this. <laughs> like, they asked him post game. He's like, yeah, I was, I was very nervous, but I didn't want to show it at all. And he... He didn't outduel Shosturkin. I wouldn't say that because no. the um, the circumstances I think were a little different. But I'm disappointed in the Rangers' offense for not giving Igor a little bit of support because if he just had that, he would have. They would have easily won that game. But Akira stepped up, and it was unreal to see that from a rookie. Um, well, not a pure rookie. Because mm-hmm. he does, he does have NHL experience. The Twelve Devils, games this year. Well, the Devils last year had to go really deep into their depth, and they had to call up a 21 year old Akira Schmid, who was fine in the AHL, 9-11 safe percentage. In six games, he was an 8-33, unusable, unusable, not an option. Should have never been an option though. Mm-hmm. At that age, this year. He ended up getting into 18 games. He was a 9.22. Yeah. That's yeah. where it came from. Yeah. He had a good season as, like, not even the backup, but, like, the, the third, third who got in for 18 games, which is a decent amount. But Yeah. And because goalies make total sense, his AHL numbers, down. Yeah. <laughs> I admire the cojones on Lindy Ruff to do that. Like, I'd, yeah, I'd, of course. I wouldn't have said, like, hey, let's swap out Vanacek for, for Akira Schmid. Like, and there's no way in my mind that I think that was a possibility because I didn't think really that it was all on Vanacek, which is not, but he didn't have a great two games. And But for Lindy Ruff to say that and then for that to boost the team, to play some incredible defense, to shut down the Rangers who who looked uh, just, just weirdly shaky. Like their power play um, was unreal. They is hitting at a forty percent clip in the first two games. They were four for ten. Kreider and then, has five goals. Kreider has been so good. Opened the scoring last night. Yeah, and he continued it. And then they go. I think it's zero for four last night on their power play, and they're just so ineffective. Here's what, here's what's interesting too. When we last talked, the Rangers had given away had had like I think seven or eight turnovers. They had nineteen last night. Wow. Yeah. And now Jersey had 15, but Jersey's been around 12 to 15 every game this mm-hmm. year. High event hockey serves the Devils, though. Yes. Yeah. And and this is what we were talking about, how I don't like how much the Devils remind me of the much younger Leafs. But uh, this is where that actually uh, works, because the way the younger Leafs won playoff games was getting stellar goaltending. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they got it out of Akira Schmid, and obviously the team did their part. Now, I, oh, sorry, no, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was going to say, there's a lot of hope to take from that game for Rangers fans because we're talking about an overtime game. Like, we're yeah. talking about an overtime game that was 1 1, and uh, the Devils won it in OT. But we were saying, we're talking about it like they got demolished. Sweeps are next to impossible. Actually, now we know there will not be one. In the first round, when the Devils won a game, yeah, they became the 16th out of 16 teams to win a playoff game. There you go. Yeah. Everyone's won a game. Sweeps are so so hard to. They, they got outplayed the entire game, but they were right in it. They all they had to do was pot one lucky goal in overtime. The Leafs. The Leafs. Yeah. Well, the younger Leafs and the <laughs> yesterday Leafs. Yeah. So the Devils, um, like, credit to Akira Shmeen for stepping up. That's unreal. I also Absolutely. want to throw this out there, and I want to ask you, because I wrote this down, Jesse. Mm-hmm. Okay? I want to know how you feel about this headline that I made up myself. Oh. <laughs> Igor Shosturkin is the reason the Rangers lost. That's Igor what I've been Sh- saying. <laughs> Igor Shosturkin is the reason they even went to overtime. That's what I've been the saying. The reason they lost? Well, because he punched. Uh, who did he punch in the oh. head? 
When he was that lying led, on top of him. Yeah, that led. So it was Timo Meyer. Yeah. Shosturkin punches him in the head, draws the penalty, and Jack Hughes is the one that scores the only New Jersey regular regulation goal. How can you say anything else other than Igor Shosturkin cost the Rangers the points? Because if if he doesn't do that, they win one nothing. Pull up the TikTok. Pull, Pull it up. up. Let's go. Pull it up. Bring it TikTok. Where I said he's I'm the worst for goalie in the NHL. No. I told you. He's the best goalie. Him and Vasilevsky, two of the best goalies in the in the league. But it's fair to say sometimes even goalies who are great make mistakes. You know what? I can't wait. Um, I can't wait for the Rangers to win the cup mm-hmm. and for me to not be able to use social media for like four months. <laughs> Why? Because of that TikTok. Oh, oh, because of, of, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh we're going to re- repost that. We're Jesse, what do you think about that? What do you think about the worst goalie? Shesterkin's penalty that led to the Jack Hughes goal? I think, As a disappointed Rangers fan. Yeah. <laughs> I think the whole reason the Rangers hung around in that game was a lot of big saves from Igor, and they should have had some at least a little bit of offensive support from him outside of that one Kreider goal, and there's no way you could put the loss on him. Okay. Uh, Watch me. Jesper Bratt with the big setup to Dougie Hamilton in overtime. I also uh, I wanted to run this. Uh, this is Jack Hughes in overtime. Uh, Jesse, if you're able to pull it up, I'm just I just sent it to you over text so I can fill for time here. But you know, Quinn Hughes was there watching. That's right. And what do you know about the Hughes brothers? Uh, they are like when you see them in interviews, dry humor. Yes, and. Uh, Soft spoken, there's the word. Quiet confidence, too. Quiet confidence. They got a swagger to them, don't you think? I really like Quinn Hughes. I got a lot of time for him. Me too. Mm-hmm. Are you ready, Jess? How how are you that you guys answered that well? Yeah, we got whacked uh, two games in a row. So, last thing I want to do is stand and talk in front of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love the Hughes brothers. They're so great. <laughs> if there's another one, Good stuff. Luke Hughes. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I haven't heard him talk yet. Let's yeah. get him in the in the game. <laughs> Isn't that great? Isn't that a great clip. <laughs> and you know, I was thinking that last night too. I'm like, man, it just it it has to suck. Like when you lose a game the way they lost, and then having to answer for it with some reporters. Oh, that's got to be tough. Uh, he also had a gem earlier this year. Um, someone was asking him, like, what can you guys do better? And he's like, we've won 13 straight. <laughs> oh, it gets the Leafs, yeah. right? When they lost the I, I, No, I, oh, I can't remember exactly yeah. what it was. No, it was during the win streak. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and we're, yeah, and he said, what? we're on a heater. <laughs> yeah, we played that on the yeah. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, um, months and months ago. The Colorado Avalanche and uh, Seattle Kraken played uh, a game last night. It had been 38,010 days since a Seattle NHL team hosted a home playoff game 1990 the seattle metropolitans were the franchise at the time i thought you were announcing the attendance and i was like how big is their no 1990 1919 oh 38,000 days what that that didn't happen (laughs) adam tell us about world war (laughs) it was just 1919 the seattle and there was a pandemic happening back then did you know that it's true Um, seven years after the titanic there you go what else happened around then jaden schwartz uh scores scores this for the the first goal at climate pledge uh they go up seattle goes up what's that playoff goal playoff goal uh and then (laughs) imagine uh obviously they lead every game in a shootout never scoring a goal (laughs) how did the seattle crack and do it shit (laughs) sick of it uh yeah dave haxtell just played tight defense all year um everyone shows up at nine maddie beneers uh got his first playoff goal Mm -hmm. uh tied the game three three bow and byram got the go-ahead goal uh, the Avs did win, but Seattle's given them a bit of trouble. And I thought this quote was really telling after the game. This is from Nathan McKinnon talking about the Kraken. He said, it's a really great team. This is definitely the hardest first round I've been in, I think. Wow. Mm. Sometimes the last few years we've been the top seed and we've not gotten easy teams by any means. But this Seattle team is a 100 point team. They're really good. And we're going to have to continue to be at our best to beat them. You know, what's funny when we talk about eras. Uh, the players do too. And mm-hmm. I think sometimes we forget about that. Cause I was just thinking, uh, Nathan, weren't you in that Minnesota uh, series where you guys were third place and they beat you? And no, no, that was, I don't even think he counts that as part of his career. It's anymore. a different, it's a different contract to go. Yeah. It was way <laughs> too long ago. Actually, you know what? He might not have even been on the team. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, but, um, all right. You want to see who he called out? 
Who he called? All the all the fan bases, all the franchises. All right, that get mad. Get ready Nathan to get angry. Nathan McKinnon called garbage. Let's put this on Reddit. He see how they do. Shit. He emailed you directly <laughs> hey, and called you shit. Nashville Predators, who the Avalanche beat last season, first round, four nothing. Fair. Nothing to the crack in. Sorry, shitville. Whoa, hey. That's gotta, what Nathan hey, McKinnon hey, said. We hey, I didn't say there, that. Hey, we he allegedly said that. Okay. Hey. All right. All right. Next up. Sorry. 2021. St. Louis Blues. 4-0. McKinnon called you garbage. Sorry. St. Louis Boo. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he said, allegedly. Now, what do we do here for the bubble? We make fun of the empty seats in Edmonton. They beat. <laughs> they finished second in seating in the round robin, and then the first round they faced the Arizona Coyotes, and oh they beat God. them four one. That means so the, coy- the Coyotes are garbage. That's right. Actually, you know what? I mean, that's the first team that <laughs> got a victory. got a win against them in the first round. Yeah, Fuck, maybe crazy. he's right. And then the last team that McKinnon called garbage in 2019 in the first round, they faced the Flames, who they beat. 4-1. So the Flames and that, that was are a weak Flames team, too. Not like, as good as the Kraken. Is that the one where Gaudreau had, like, 90 breakaways and converted on none of them? Yeah. 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 And I say weak Flames team because they always had the skill. They always had the skill to be elite. Shit, he's right. He's, he's, right. Right. he's, he's, he's also, like, wildly accurate about this. Yes. He, there's been two sweeps, and then the other ones were the Flames and the Coyotes. I who, also, they beat chick, 4-1. Chickpea <laughs> pasta. It's good for your memory. I, I also I think, know. man, Na- if Nathan McKinnon says it, and it's that specific, I believe him because yeah. he's so so type A about everything. Like, what was it? Was the door off? At the, the, he got mad at the story, but the uh, the no chocolate bars in the dress. You guys could eat chocolate bars in the uh, offseason. The chickpea pasta. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. So yeah. funny. Now... Uh, of note, and as of the recording of this show, we really don't know where this stands, but uh, after the game, Valerie Natushkin was no longer in Seattle for personal reasons. There is no timetable set for his return. Darren McKee of uh, 104.3 The Fan in Denver is reporting that he said, I'm trying to confirm details, but something happened Saturday afternoon at the team hotel. Whatever it was, it was significant enough for Valerie Natushkin to be taken by security to the airport. His whereabouts at this moment are unknown. What? What? I don't even know what to say about that. Well, we... I His don't think... whereabouts are unknown? Is that what you just said? That's what he said. Yeah. By the media. Yeah, and I don't know, uh, I don't know be... what the abs know and what they don't. Yeah. So that is the report as of now, as of this recording. Chances are that updates later this afternoon, but I think we got to give you the most relevant information that we have as of the recording. Wow. Uh, A pretty valuable guy, too. Sometimes that's the end of the topic. I don't know. Yeah, I, well, no, we don't need to comment on it. No, it's I just know. sort of like, that's what we know. Holy fuck. Well, I mean, uh, he got his big contract for how important he was to the Avalanche last year. Yes. And, uh, wow, that's uh, no small thing. So... I know the game is happening tonight, so we're not going to... And there's actually games going on right now as we're recording this. But, Jesse, I, I sent you the um, uh, the Oilers King Zap Ruder film. Uh, basically, did Gabe Velarde high stick the puck over Connor McDavid in overtime? And I just think it's fascinating when you... Uh, when you look at Jay Woodcroft talking about the situation, he's like, it's a play where the greatest player in the world is two feet away as it happens, and an arc, arc, and his arm comes straight up in the air because he knows it hit the puck. He's, Otherwise, he wouldn't put his arm up in the air and keep playing. It appears to me, and in the video, the puck is going straight and up, and the trajectory deadens. That is, yeah, that's Jay Woodcroft uh, just saying things he doesn't need to. Uh, Connor McDavid raising his hand doesn't mean that Gabe Velarde touched the puck. You know what uh, confirms Gabe Velarde touched the puck? The video showing Gabe Velarde touching the puck. He absolutely touched it. He 100% touched it. A lot of people are, are focusing <sighs> on the the camera shot that's dead on, and it's, yeah. it is it is really difficult to tell on that angle. There's another one that's overhead. Oh, it's crazy. It's, it's the, so... It's the it's one blatant. from the like the um, the stance. Yes. You know, the one that's through yes. the net that that's from the back of him. It's pretty... Does clear. head office not have access to that angle? Oh, yeah. They saw... So, uh, it's, it's hard. It's I don't know. Weird. It's the way the rule is written with video review. Mm-hmm. It's... You have to have con- conclusive evidence to overturn that. And... There's a, I guess the refs argue that what that is, this, 
this maybe the puck hitting the stick isn't conclusive enough to overturn it. So you, which, know why? you need to see it from more than one angle for it to be conclusive. Like yeah. what what constitutes conclusivity? But I I think that shot from where the net is in the stands is kind of conclusive. That looks it conclusive. Yeah. Our LA fans today are like, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, wait, wait, he Steve's probably didn't touch bit. it. What's happening? I'm doing a bit. I'm looking around the room. There are five screens in this room that are bigger than the screens that the refs no, so, look for the high stick. No, 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 no. So oh. the Toronto's looking at it. Well, then what the fuck? He touched the puck. Yeah, I do love that they give them a tiny, the tiniest little iPad mini. Yeah, they're both they're both looking at it, but like Toronto's looking at it mainly and telling the ref in his ear what's happening. You know, I mean, so. Either they didn't see it, or they decided it wasn't enough that it mattered. Mm. But you can conclusively say Velarde high stick the puck. Now, does intent factor into it? I don't think it does. I mean, I, Velarde didn't try to touch the puck, but he did. Oh yeah, no. If you touch it, regardless of whether you're trying to touch it, you touched it. Right. It's a that's a penalty. <laughs> So or not the a penalty. You can't. You can't do also, that. Also, it's not a high. penalty. The play's just uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. dead. I, I also yeah. want to ask this: what The fuck is his stick doing up that high? Gabe, what the fuck, man? He was going it for the puck. No, stop it. Uh, no, it's no like that's it not. It's not a smart play. As you're spinning, and no, no, it's not being responsible with your stick, but like it will happen. Mm-hmm. It's not in uh, overtime, Gabe. Well. It's not uh, Jake Gardner waving at the. Oh fuck! I'll, uh, the, don't, I still don't, see that in my nightmares. Don't, don't, oh! don't. Now. One person that is going to be thrilled today is Mikey Stevens because 28-year-old Trevor Moore, former Leaf, first Californian-born player to score a postseason overtime winner for a California-based team uh, oh, with the power that, play is goal. Is that his favorite player? Uh, Trevor Moore is Mikey Stevens' oh, favorite. Okay. I didn't, I didn't he, oh, sorry. Oh, he's like he's been sorry. He's been like thirsting over him for about ten years. On uh, yeah. Prior to his wife leaving him, his identity was Trevor Moore. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Trevor Moore enjoyer, Mikey Stevens. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, sorry, I should have explained that. Good for him. Um, yeah, sure. He scored a playoff overtime winner, but we're talking about Calder Cup winning. Trevor, Trevor Moore. Moore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, lost in all the other hockey. And again, the, they're probably, I think they're playing right now, the Islanders. Um, the, Isles, Isle, the Islanders scored five goals, not in the series, but in one game. Right. And and here's the thing. all Four of those five goals came in the third period. That's more goals in one game than they'd scored in the entire series leading up. They had more goals. Or they had the same amount of goals in the period as they had scored in game one and two combined. What a silly team. Yeah. They're capable of it. Well, here's the thing, too. Here's the it's it's goals from Kyle Palmieri and Matt Martin, forty four mm-hmm. seconds apart. Matt Martin. It's baby. the most Islanders. The Islanders are so fucking the Islanders. I like I, they are the Islanders. Matt Martin was right to come to Toronto and secure the bag. They gave him a ten million dollar contract. Yeah, you got to. Yeah. But he, he's an Islander. But like it was, it felt like a rental. Yeah, he was always an Islander. Carolina had three power plays over an eleven and a half minute stretch. From the final minute of the first to the middle of the second, only got three shots. Sorokin mm-hmm. and the Isles defense, this is what they can do. This is what they do, baby. Eyes popping out of your head, boa constrictor style. Yep. That's how they win games. It's how they've always won games. They're the only team who plays playoff hockey all year long. <laughs> they barely get into the playoffs, but once they do, that's why they look so well practiced when when it arrives. I, I didn't feel too worried about the Hurricanes after that loss, though. No, probably not. I but feel like I feel like they probably sneak out this one and go up three one. I I'm with you, I, and I think Sweet according to uh, according to Twitter right now, the Islanders just had a, a call not go their way, a big one, and they got jobbed according oh, no. to Twitter. So I don't know what happened. I, I again, it's we're recording right now. When they play afternoon games, what are we going to do? Do right? we just have short memories, or are people complaining a lot more these playoffs? Well, I think. I, well, I think the last three years it's really picked up. I mean, Leaf fans have been complaining. Uh, the Lightning have been complaining. Islanders fans have been complaining a lot, uh, and justifiably so. Oilers fans have been complaining a lot. I saw Bruins fans complaining so. against Florida even when they won. Yeah, they're correct. And Panthers fans going, where the hell is the thing on Nosek? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So ag- again, it's just prison rules. I think playoff time. I think it's it's more than that though. I do think that we we grew up and when I was growing up, um the the mantra was and it's the title of Mike Babcock's book, doesn't matter how the officials call the game, leave no doubt. Yep. Leave no doubt. Don't leave it up to the officials, but the reality is the NHL's thing is parity. 
if the games are real fucking close. So yeah. the calls do matter. They matter so They matter more much. than they used to, for sure. Yeah. Um, and I also think uh, instant replay is showing that there is some serious <laughs> holes in how the game is officiated. Now, uh, Minnesota came roaring back, too. They got a short memory. Philip Gustafson, 23 saves. Um, it helps when Zuccarello opens the scoring in the first. Then you got Hartman and Klingberg on the assist. Those guys needed to get on the score sheet. Hartman, man. that He was such a weird player. Like, he was the guy everyone overpaid for every year. I think Boston got him one year on a trade deadline. I don't even remember. Yeah. But, like, it's it's like he decided to be the player everyone thought he was on a dime last year. Uh, Minnesota, absolutely ridiculous um, what happens to Joel Arison X walking into the walking into the game and then immediately not being able to play. Yes. And then them playing with short of forward the entire game and winning it. Did that seriously happen? Yeah, yeah. So he comes back and he takes, what is it, a seven-second shift or whatever? And then for the rest of the game, they got to play down a man? Because mm -hmm. he, he tried to come back and he didn't have it. How don't you know? They didn't know. After warm-up. They didn't know. What did he do? They didn't know. Oh, man. <laughs> That's bad. Yeah. Um, so it, the, the great effort by them. I also thought that it was interesting that Dallas's lone goal came from Luke Glendening, who is still playing NHL hockey. In Dallas, which makes a painful amount of sense. It's, it makes so much sense, right? Yeah. Hey, we have no use for this guy. Ah, 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 said the Dallas Stars. And, and I don't know if you saw the one uh, Luke Glendening fan. Underrated. <laughs> Sorry. I know, I know that uh, uh, Mike, Mike Babcock's there wearing a Luke Glendening jersey. It's his favorite fucking hockey player from Detroit. Like, he adored Luke Glendening to the pain and mis uh, discomfort of Detroit fans everywhere. No, but what he actually wears is a Medano jersey with an X through it. <laughs> and the number is 1499. 1499. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, Boston comes roaring back in their game against Florida. I mean, l listen, they were up early, and uh, Florida didn't even score their two goals until the third period when Boston was already up 4 nothing. Now, I, I do want to say Patrice Bergeron did not fly to Florida uh, for this series. It's expected he's returning in game five. So if Florida does not win tomorrow, uh, tonight, um, it's this is this is their prime opportunity. If they want to stay in this series. You got to do it while Bergeron's not there because Marchand has to behave. If you notice from him and, and even the athletics writing articles about it, he is now the leader. So he because he used to be he used to be able to go and do stupid crazy shit and he could do some of that but without Marchand on the ice they're significantly less potent and so he has to behave a little bit you don't want Bergeron coming back so Marchand could be Marchand fully right you gotta get the split here can they do it guys they can do it I mean you need saves you gotta continue to be I mean it's it's interesting the deeper the series goes it almost favors Florida mm -hmm. because the calls go away Okay. The calls going away, I think, is the only way they have a shot in this series. Mm -hmm. Kachuk and Lomberg and Ekblad, if he's not hurt. And they, 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 uh, Gudis, holy shit, Gudis. Give Marchand a few more angle slams and attitude adjustments and tombstone pile drivers. And <laughs> I, I can't even believe what he was able to get away with. Like It's one of the most Playoffs. unbelievable sequences of sequences I've seen that favors the Panthers as well as Bergeron being out if you can't beat the Bruins with Bergeron out you can't beat him uh of note Aaron Ekblad left the game after a hard collision with Charlie Coyle we still don't have any word on if he's playing today or not I highly doubt we're gonna get word yeah he'll just show up on the in the warm-up or whatever so uh that is sort of the the recap of everything going on uh we're I should tell you for our schedule purposes that our show will be on obviously today then Tuesday, then Friday randomly because the, they kind of uh, like rigged the system so that the Leafs will have an extra day in between so that they'll play again next Saturday night for the ratings, baby. Well, and also um, what CJ predicted in this very chair I'm sitting in could come true. If the Leafs win game four, they'll be up three games to one and then it's two days off for them to sit and brood <laughs> and think until game five. <sighs> plan baby plan and yet that's best case scenario no what they should do is they should confidently plan the their their fine their finale game hey guys what if we kick some fucking ass there you go let's do it to quote justin fisher what if they simply woke up and played this way every game why not uh can i, can I shout out two things yeah we sped a little quickly through the other series we did 
Um, the Minnesota Wild, shout out your defense for sh- absolutely shutting down the uh, Dallas Stars. Rupe Hintz had zero shots on goal. <laughs> Jason Robertson wasn't on the ice because uh, he was so ineffective. He might as well have not have been there. Wow. It was a, a absolutely fantastic defensive performance by them. Uh, and then other shout out to the other defense, the LA Kings, who, hey, I don't know if you noticed, Connor McDavid has no five on five goals. I know he put up he put up two power play goals. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Philip Deneau and Anze Kopinar have shut him down at five on five. Yeah. That is a thing that has happened. The Oilers being down two one is such a big problem because the calls that they already haven't been getting are going to be even harder to get. Yeah. So two defenses there just playing terrific uh throughout the series. And uh it's the Western Conference. I think you said earlier that the Western Conference might have been bad. But the Western Conference teams are so close together that every series is interesting. Like Colorado and, and Seattle feel so close uh, in terms of, hey, who could win this? Minnesota and Never Dallas feel guessed. so close. Edmonton and L.A. are right one and one. So there's so much drama happening in the West right now. It's, it's fascinating to see. It's been a great first round of the playoffs. As always it is, is. I always forget. How fucking fun the first round it's is. The best. And then it happens every year again, like Christmas. And you're like, oh. First round's awesome. Well, and then the <laughs> NBA first round is going on at the same time. Oh. And like, I... Skip it. I was sitting there... <laughs> <laughs> wow, really? Really? Because I was sitting there the other day going, I didn't know I had this many opinions about Joel Embiid. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> I didn't know that. Are you, are you happy that uh, the Phillies swept Brooklyn and some of the other uh, games haven't even played like three Actually, yeah, some some series had to play the third game like bef- after uh, Philly already swept their first round series. Are you telling me the NHL isn't the only league with scheduling problems? No, no, it's a thing. Oh, yeah. Another ESPN thirty for thirty is going to have to be the super team that wasn't Brooklyn Nets. I yes. honestly, did you not see that coming just a little bit? It's yeah. like ah, thin skin guy plays with thin skin guy, and then they trade for thin skin guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did they think was going to happen there? It's like a, a championship. Just three angry guys. Oh, don't you dare insult me even a little bit. Or otherwise, I'm just going to not show up. It's crazy. I can't. The Brooklyn Nets are fascinating. Yeah. I want to know the real story. Spends and then, four minutes a game on the bench, and all of them are on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then how do you get in a situation where the owner has to step in and trade you in Joe Sy and Kyrie Irving? Yes. Where he was so fed up with this guy. He's like, trade him. I own this team, and he's not going to be on my team anymore. Yeah. Oh, it's it's great. It's, uh, yeah, there needs. I would love a thirty for thirty on the failure of the Brooklyn Nets and the and Durant playing on the Suns. He's probably like like what the like he's mm-hmm. so so good. Oh, <laughs> he's yeah. so unbelievable. But then good. you get into a situation where you are Joe Sy and like the front office of the Brooklyn Nets. How do you say no to Kevin Durant saying I'm going to come there if you bring my buddies and we'll, it'll be you'll have James Harden, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving? Yeah. You don't and say also, no to that. And also, yeah, I'm not <laughs> right, going to play right. there for the first year. Oh yeah. He's, Everyone forgets he that. He signed the contract and didn't play for a year. You're going to pay me unfathomable monies to oh. not play a single game for you all year for the first year, and then we'll compete. Ooh. Uh, okay. That's how good Kevin Durant is. Yes. Yeah, if you don't know, he's in the pantheon of top 20 NBA players yeah, of all time. I'll pay time. you $40 million, whatever it is. It's to, 42. To rehab. $42, million 42 just, million just to rehab. is It's crazy. Yeah, it's a wild factor yeah. in that whole. Yeah. Part of me That's wonders, a great point. <laughs> as a total, as a total, not. Do you not feel like um, both the Raptors and the Nets would have been better if they had just made the trade for Durant last summer? Because the Raptors were in on it, they didn't want to give up Scotty Barnes. They would have given up OG instead. And I just wonder if it would have been better for Brooklyn and it would have been better for Toronto. I don't think they. I don't think the Raptors would have won with Durant. Mm-mm. They'd have gone deeper if, if yeah they had to include Barnes. Like I don't think you ever do that. Do you, no, right? you don't. So if you, but what I'm saying is I think Brooklyn should have relented, and I oh, think yeah. it would have been better for them because they would have ended up with who were they going to get? They were going to get OG, a bazillion draft picks forever, and yeah. a few other you know good players as well. And they got a lot from the Suns. Though. They did. They got a huge package. Raps don't win the Kawhi year. Masai's long gone. Oh yeah, but we worship mm. him like a god for taking the 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 risky move and winning. If if they bow out in seven to Philly, he's that, that he's already with the Suns. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And while we're here, or Wizards, whatever. Search on your favorite podcast feed, the Objective Basketball. Podcast. Yes, it is a fantastic podcast yes. with uh, S, our NBA reporter, and Lauren Gunn, who mm-hmm. talk about the NBA and all the goings on. You can hear full Nick Nurse is fired thoughts on the Objective Basketball. Right. 
podcast. There you go. Let's, uh, should we do the press conference? Sure. All right, let's do it. The Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. Steve, how you feeling? Sleepy. <laughs> you get tomorrow off, man. Oh, I cannot wait. We're getting Chinese food tonight. I'm going to eat myself into a coma. Oh, good for you. And that's that's it. That's you deserve the plan. it. That's yeah. the plan. All right. This is from Cryptic CG. I'm going to add on a little to this question after I read the question. Cryptic CG said, this is from our Discord, by the way. Go to stpn.ca, join us on Discord. How do you take Nyes out of the lineup? Is their question. And I'm just going to put on a little end to that Michael Bunting question mark. Man, I mm. don't see it making sense. I think if the, if the Leafs are up 3-1, no, y- you can't. No, you can't. If it's 2-2 and Bunting has a bad game for, I can see it. Not but, Bunting. Nice. What did I say? You said Bunting. Oh, fuck. I'm so tired. I think I, I could see Nice coming out if he has a bad game for and, and the series is split. Um, the only thing that makes any kind of sense mm-hmm. is, oh, 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 I still don't love it. But you can take out Aston Reese That's, and, and put Bunting there. That is honestly what I thought if Aston Reese had a bad game. But again, he's been fine. He's been fine. I, I don't listen. Big hits. If somebody is like Bunting needs to earn the trust, forget the Leaf fans. He needs to earn the trust of coaching staff back. He can't do that if he doesn't play. You're right. But he doesn't have the trust. So why would you play him in a series where you're doing pretty well? You're holding your own. If you can win this series, Maybe he gets a shot in game two or game three of the next. Now, you know what's worth mentioning with Bunting? Because a lot of negatives have been said about him. So let me let me insert a positive. There have been a few times in Bunting's Leafs tenure where Keefe has taken him uh, off of his top six role and put him on the fourth line. Mm-hmm. And every time he shows up and produces. It happened like a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> every time he's demoted, he shows up and produces. But... Again, I just don't want to see Keith repeat the mistake he made in the Montreal series with Dermot and Sandine. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Leave it. Steve, I don't know. I haven't heard you do this, so I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it. This is from TurboCrab94. Steve, why do you always hate on Morgan Riley's tape job? What's wrong with it? Coming from somebody with a very similar tape job. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just boring. <laughs> what is it? It's literally just some tape <laughs> on it. And there's nothing on the toe and there's nothing on the heel. It's just like he goes zoo, 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 maybe four or five times around and that's it. Like across the middle of the blade? Yeah. Like everyone. I seen it, so you got to describe it to me. Yeah. Sorry. My bad. It's just, it's just <laughs> the middle of the blade. It just feels like everyone these days has their own kooky little personality put into it. And Willie looks like he wears a sock on his stick. And <laughs> Riley's got his weird little, little bend in there. And Panarin's got the weird tape. And Pasternak's got the weird tape. And uh, Stutzla's got the weird tape. Mm-hmm. And Riley's just like. I'm a single dad of three. I don't have time for this. <laughs> just, that dude was born 42 years old and fed up. And I love him for it. I love him for it. It his stick tape perfectly matches his personality. No, oh, so you you complain about it in a loving way. Oh, absolutely, in yes. a loving way. Okay, in the same way that I call Ryan O'Reilly's definitely illegal shovel uh, <laughs> the best. I don't know how it's allowed. Last question. <laughs> this is from Monsieur Bouya. Who's your favorite Leaf who played college hockey in New England? <laughs> ben Scrivens. <laughs> I love that. All right, we'll wrap it up there. Um, and we will be back on Tuesday and then Friday next week. But don't forget, CJ show tomorrow and Thursday. <sighs> Where, where's Cornell? Is that in New England? That's where he played. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. I was right. What were you saying? I just was giving up the schedule. That's enough. <laughs> enough of you. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? Follow the guys on Twitter. At Steve underscore Dangle. At Adam W-Y-L-D-E. And at Jesse Blake. 
Connection complete.